And one day we were just talking about it in the Discord server. We were just talking about, and, and some guy was just like, was like, well, I have a copy of that episode. Yeah, I know. I was like, wait, what? What's going on? We're like, what's what? What? What, what, do you what do you mean you have happened? a copy of that episode? He's like, oh yeah, yeah, here. And he, sh he shows like a picture of the disc. And <laughs> we're like, like what? what? <laughs> yeah, that was insane. What oh is going God. on? Hello and welcome to the Squared Corner Podcast, where I, your host, JC Squared, will be interviewing guests of many different types in the Hot Wheels community. Today's guest is Accelerys. Welcome on. Howdy ho. How you doing? I'm all right. It's um, it's a Saturday. It's it's quiet. Um, it's starting to get warmer outside. I think the seasons are changing. Um, That's nice. Yeah. Which which is which is funny because it just snowed here last week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of what that's kind of what you get on the east coast of the U.S. Yeah. So. For for me, I mean, it's obvious that we just um we just get whatever. It's whatever Mother Nature throws at Houston. Yeah. That's all it is. Houston is. Yeah. I don't. I don't mind. Uh, I don't mind dynamic weather. I actually like it. Um, I just don't like the um, mood swingy weather. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I get you. I get you. So I wanted to get straight into this and just say, um, what what first got you into the community? What was the trigger? Uh, it's complicated. Uh, <laughs> like everyone else, uh, I liked Accelerators when I was a kid. Uh, you know, I saw World Race Episode 1 when it first premiered on TV. <laughs> um, but, you know, I was a toddler. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I never really forgot about it. It was just never really at the forefront of my entire life like it is now. Uh, but, you know, my brother and I would sometimes quote it growing up. It was always in the back of my mind. Um, but in 2014, uh, I went to a toy show with my brother. It's uh, this toy show in my hometown that happens once a year in November, and it's it's huge. Mm. Uh, and in twenty, this was 2014, so it was tail end of 2014. Uh, I was 15 years old, and one of the guys had like a uh, a big tote of of carded world race cars for three bucks a piece and i got all the team leaders Dang. <laughs> and i displayed them on my uh i displayed them in my room and i was like i think i'm gonna collect these so i collected on and off uh mostly just at that toy show i wasn't using like ebay or anything like that mm -hmm. and then when i graduated high school uh or after i graduated high school in 2017 is when i really got serious about it and i started like really getting into the hobby and um I was really getting into Acceleracers, and I, I joined this Facebook group, and I was posting memes in it like constantly, and there was mm. it was it was empty. I mean, there's tumbleweeds, like nobody. <laughs> I was yeah. the only one posting, and this this uh, this one guy who is um, uh, his name's Danny uh, Descartes uh, Power underscore Pipes on Discord um, sent me a message and was like, "Hey, just like join this Discord server." And uh, took off from there. I mean, I, and at that point, I I did not know what Discord was, so it was mm. all new to me. Oh wow! And um, but when I joined, I was just like, I think this is going to be my life for the next four years, <laughs> <laughs> which is something I never That's saw funny. coming. And I think uh, the Accelerators fandom uh, before that sort of time, like around 2017 ish, where it really started to flourish. Uh, there was never really like a central place for Accelerators fans to like congregate, mm. and it was just very scattered, and and a lot of it was gate kept by like Encyclopedia and the Edge and mm. all that, and uh, because um, even though I wasn't super interested in Accelerators in through the mid 2010s, now and then I would check in to see what like fans are up to online, and and it was always just that it was just like. Well, the edge is coming next year, and you know and now the the edge the edge is coming the year oh, after that. Actually, oh no, the edge. You know, they just oh keep. Oh my gosh, they, they keep pushing it back, and it's like Celipedia this and Celipedia that, and it's just like Chris and his buddies getting yeah. angry at fans, and it was just like this sucks. So yeah. when when it uh, was like flourishing in like 2017, 2018, I was super into it, and and I. I've always been a closeted uh, Thomas the Tank Engine fan, and and their fandom is like a big deal. And uh, I always was fascinated by. I, I always kind of. I never really participated in the Thomas fandom, but I watched it from like the sidelines because mm -hmm. it was just always fascinating to me. Because I, I never really was involved in fandom culture before yeah. this, 
And um, when I sort of realized that like, this is, this is going to like flourish. I really was, uh, you know, I really wanted to get involved. So, and at that point, I mean, I was already a video editor and I already recorded music and I already do all this creative stuff. Mm -hmm. So the content creation was a very, uh, a natural transition. Okay. That's, that's, that's funny. I was actually going to ask, um, what, uh, did, so did you actually get started back? How how old is Accelopedia back then? I guess that was. Uh, Accelopedia has been around since Acceleracers aired. Oh, has it? Okay. So that's yeah, really, I, I remember, there. I guess I never really was into Yeah. That. I remember using Accelopedia in like 2008, like when I was like nine years old. Cause like me and my, my fourth grade friends would like argue about Accelerator store, and then mm, we to prove you. each other wrong, we look it up <laughs> on Accelopedia. That's how it was yeah, back in the yeah. day. Oh uh, man, that's good. Uh, what is um, w- which which one did you start first? Did you start Tesla's Cube first, or did you start Accelerate first as your as your YouTube channel? Accelerate has been uh, around for a long time. Uh, it was just okay. under different names and under different content. Uh, I started I started YouTube channel in 2011. Because I was really in the Nerf. Mm. Uh, I used to do these uh, Nerf war films, uh, sort of like back Nerf. in the day. My that gosh. was that was really popular. I, I wrote and... a whole book about Nerf wars. Like I, <laughs> I had like fifteen books of fan fiction on Nerf. Oh my gosh! That's that's awesome, dude. I was I was twelve years old and I saw Seacox ninety seven and I was like, I can do that, right? Mm-hmm. So I did that for a long time and and it had like a kind of a small audience not yeah huge but uh and that was my first channel rfr films which is still around you can still go watch it uh oh, i don't yes. really up i don't really upload to it anymore but i i use it to browse so if mm-hmm. you see me comment comment on youtube it's probably with that old account and uh the accelerate channel was actually rfr ex- like rfr films extras like it was like a oh, second okay. channel and i just uploaded like just little behind the scenes stuff or, and then I started uploading uh, YouTube poop videos on it. Oh, <laughs> and, Jeez. and, uh, <laughs> you know, at, at this point I'd been doing this like nerf YouTube stuff for like seven, 10 years. And I was trying to gain an audience making this, you know, content with a lot of effort in it and everything. And then this crazy thing happened where my YouTube poops became my like most watched videos ever. Wow! <laughs> so it's like these these youtube poop videos are getting more more views and more attention now granted it wasn't like a lot it's still like only in the thousands it's not like the imp lemon type of youtube yeah poops. it was like you know <laughs> five thousand views six thousand yeah, views it's still a lot and still a lot. and uh and so i was rolling with the youtube poop thing for a while after i finished nerf wars and uh then i rebranded the channel into youtube poop channel i think it was called rfr poops and that was during the time i was getting into acceleracers i was started doing the cold wheels series which oh yeah you know people don't know i i did the youtube poop cold wheels series i'm the one who started the spine bust is my call gag and (laughs) (laughs) it's the best gag ever though let's be honest people i still see people say it I still see people say it, and it's like that never stopped being funny for some it's people. So funny, but thing. anyway, I'm sorry to me, it's still funny. But yeah, when I was doing the cold wheels, then it was like then I was the Hot Wheels guy. So I just I rebranded, <laughs> I rebranded like my entire internet persona to just Accelerates and just mm. made it all into like just combined it all into one. Because mm. I used to go by like several different usernames, and I think it really confused people. And still yeah. to this day it bites me in the butt because you know some people don't know that i did like the music covers and because it went under a different name oh yeah for for what was the name for the music covers by the way for those that don't uh know. see the thing is is that uh i do my own original music outside of the fandom and it's mm-hmm. under like an artist name and i've changed that artist name like three times okay. gotcha. <laughs> because i've been sitting i've been sitting on this album i've been recording for like four years and i keep changing little things like that mm-hmm. and uh, anyone who's a songwriter musician will understand where i'm coming from with that yeah i mean you can tinker with something until the end of time if you don't release it but mm. uh yeah it was it was called project r and then it was called skylights and then i changed it to cerulea but i think i need to go back and change all that stuff to just be accelerates okay 
Interesting. Yeah, I think I had. I think I I had used your music when it was under Skylight at one point. Yeah, most people did. Yeah, that's very interesting. So it was the Skylights uh, thing. It was the Skylights thing was kind of the reason people didn't really realize that that was me. Okay. Yeah, I think that was also the time when another SoundCloud YouTuber, or not YouTuber. I guess he's just a he was a musician. He did the covers for Hot Wheels. He did the rap covers. For all the accelerations. Oh, uh, you music. mean like rap covers? Yeah, it was. I don't know it's, if I'm it's called a hot something I can't say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay, I know what you're about. Yeah. hot something I can't say. That guy, <laughs> that guy did an, ex- an acceleracers themed mixtape, and it was yes. one of the funniest things I've ever yes. heard. I think that came out around the same time that that your music covers started coming out. So I think and it was like it was it like from. good too. Like yeah, no, it was pretty good. <laughs> I think Vulcan's only gripe with it was that he didn't use the the CD. He used the YouTube audio, so oh, yeah, he's yeah. like the best audio ever. But I mean, it was still pretty very, good. Um, still pretty good. Very typical Acceleracers fan thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what got you into the the Tesla Cube t- channel? The, I know it's run with multiple people. So, what got yes. you into that one? Uh, it started with uh, a group of buddies on Discord. Uh, we got together and because we were doing a lot of research stuff. And uh, really, the genesis of Tesla's Cube was about misinformation. Uh, mm. I think mis- misinformation was has always been a big problem in the Accelerators fandom. Oh yeah, hundred percent. A lot of it because of all like that, all the the edge stuff, and you know, mm-hmm. people were just getting, and it's just so many like crackpot theories about just like why the, the series ended and stuff like that. And we just really wanted to like dig into the research and try to set the record straight and. Mm-hmm it maybe it worked maybe it didn't um but that and we also wanted to like celebrate just accelerators in general and just make we just wanted to make accelerators content i think we knew we knew that a sort of a new era of the accelerators fandom was being ushered in in real time and i think we wanted to really kind of get in on that as far as Mm. content creation and tesla's cube has kind of changed into something that is different from what we had in mind going in the problem with the research stuff was that once you get so far into it, you start getting into territory where you're cursed with knowledge that you can't share. Oh, mm. so a lot of like what we can tell people just sort of comes to a, a <laughs> that you sort of just can't talk about stuff anymore. Oh, so it's I like, see, what's yeah. the point? What's the point when we can't release information? So mm-hmm. that's why a lot of the research stuff has kind of been on the down low and. You just really haven't been seeing content less, about less it. Less active, yeah. Because I know I think last two years, it feels like we finally got a lot of the answers to just what what did they try to do after? And and this is now public knowledge. I'm pretty sure it's just like the some of the prototypes and all of yeah, that. It's, people it's have seen knowledge. the figures, and it's like what they were gonna yeah. do, and then they didn't do. Uh, I think that's always interesting. And then I think it's the common knowledge. I think the common theme right now is that it was just a marketing change in terms of what happened with the end of of it. It's just I think marketing team that was saying. definitely like the 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 marketing team rotating was definitely an aspect of it. But I think there was also probably some other reasons. I think I think, mm. and this is just speculation on my point uh, or on my part. Um, but I think uh, the sales had something to do oh, with okay. it too because i uh the the show wasn't uh distributed very well mm-hmm. uh, not a lot of people watched the show and toonami really didn't care about the show so they did the most yeah. minimal amount of work yeah toonami to really it. hated it if uh, man i remember I forget, watching that video on i forget who pointed podcast. it out i for i forget who pointed it out but it's really Im- important uh to note like when uh, the show was airing in 2005, they had like a website for Acceleracers and it would the front page of the website would tell you the air date for the next episode so you can tune in. <laughs> and they did it for the Speed of Silence and mm-hmm. after Speed of Silence aired, they never updated it for Breaking Point. It just was That's stuck on Speed of Silence. That's why I was always silence. so confused. I didn't so even know no one actually, movies. <laughs> no one actually knew when Breaking Point was going to air and it just aired one day and it got Oh my goodness. No ratings. So people were walking in the stores and they were seeing these cars and they didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and, and the cars just, and, and a lot of Cyrus's fans don't want to face this, but the cars did not sell well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I think that's definitely one of the main points that a lot of people forget about because they they think oh, how could they not sell well they're going for so much right now it's like yeah yeah but they didn't sell well back then so that was the problem marketing oh, and man. i mean like like half of my carded collection have clearance stickers on them <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> when i was a when i was a kid in like 2008 ish uh a five below opened up and uh they had entire shipments of liquidated accelerators and that's where i used to buy my cars that's insane they, they, they all got liquidated because people weren't buying them yeah. and that's why that's why a lot of the later wave cars are so rare like spec and chicane is because mm -hmm. cars that were in those assortments like a lot of the stores didn't get those assortments because mattel sent way too many assortments of like the first couple oh. sent too many cases of those first couple assortments so the stores were just stuck with all these early assortments. And, and when Mattel was ready to send the next couple batches, they're like, they we don't need them. any more. We're good. Yeah, we still have yeah. some here. We need we need different ones. And so a, a lot of those a lot of those cases ended up in like drug stores and like five below and like it's weird. Those oddball stores of so like people didn't mm. get their hands on them when they did Gen 2. Uh, they were Kmart exclusive and they were kind of limited. Uh, That's why I have a jackhammer. My, my mom used to shop at Kmart all the time. And I was always like, how did I get this jackhammer with water? I never knew how I got it. And I was like, oh, it was Kmart then. That's why. You do you still have it? Yeah, it's it's uh, somewhere over here and on the That's awesome, dude. Side. Yeah. That thing's, uh, the water realm jackhammer I know is pretty hard to find. Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> all, all the Gen 2 cars are, are hard to find because of the fact that like it was only for a short amount of time and it was yeah. a kmart exclusive and it's also in the the game it's to beat that game that's what i liked about yeah it. yeah that's true that it's is true beat that game i think that's one I always of the found fun that interesting. About collecting is trying to collect the cars that are actually in games yeah Hot Wheels. you know what's funny uh i'm a big i'm big into uh, disney pixar cars and um i got a buddy his name's disney docket he's a mm -hmm. youtuber who reviews uh diecast uh, pixar car stuff and he does a little bit of hot wheels too uh and he just now just started like making videos showing off some of his hot wheels and uh i talk with him in the dms all the time and, and uh he really likes beat that because it's a game that he grew up with and mm. he started a collection collecting the cars from beat that and he very quickly realized um just how much of a pain these Gen <laughs> Two Accelerators cars are to get your hands on, and he's not cosmic. He's spec a big type, be like. <laughs> yeah, he's a big Battle Force Five fan, but he's not as familiar with Accelerators. Okay, uh, so he was like, "Why are these cars so expensive and hard to find? <laughs> these are freaking Hot Wheels. What is going on?" <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "He's not like unfamiliar with like that type of stuff too, because I mean, he's." big in the pixar cars collecting mm. and i mean he's got prototypes like he spends big money wow. and, and he really searches he's really i mean he's he's uh been finding some really rare battle force 5 stuff yeah, even he's like what the what is going yeah. on with these cars yeah. and i had to explain <laughs> to him the market and where it's at right now and mm -hmm. how everything's just kind of spiraling out of control <laughs> it's, it's out of control is one way to put it <laughs> it's, it's off into a new universe of of collecting and supply and demand oh my goodness mm. um i want to go back to to some of that research um what was what is what do you think was some of the coolest cooler things that you found um pub public stuff uh what do you think one of the greatest discoveries was i think for me it was the australian dvds with the extra dan dresden uh lines that was probably that like was a the funny story mind blown thing ever because it was uh only on on i think it's spanish it was the only way we could find it at the moment and yeah i guy. i remember i remember when that was found that's a really funny story too because it wasn't i mean it was a bombshell find but it wasn't like we dug and we discovered it It was like the english version of that episode was lost media because when the episode aired on TV, it's different than how it mm -hmm. was in the final release. Yeah. Uh, World Race was never a movie. It was a it was a four episode miniseries, and people don't understand that. <laughs> but um, yeah, there was like cut dialogue in the final release. So we were looking for the longest time. We were looking for that episode all the way back from the Cellopedia days. They were looking for that mm. stuff. No one had a copy of the fourth episode from the TV airing, and it was never released in like a uh, video two pack. 
So we were looking for a copy, uh, us, the research team at Tesla's Cube, we were looking for a copy of that long time. We were asking around the internet. Um, we even put it in the Lost Media Wiki database and everything, and, and, and no one was coming forward. And one day we were just talking about it in the Discord server. We were just talking about and, and some guy was just like, was like, well, I have a copy of that episode. Yeah, I know. I was like, wait, what? What's going on? We're like, what? What? You, what? What do you what mean you, mean you have happens? a copy of that episode? He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, here. And he, sh- he shows like a picture of the disc. And <laughs> we're like, like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, that was insane. What oh is going gosh. on? Oh, my gosh. That was insane. As it turns out, he's from Australia. Mm-hmm. And Australia, there was like these um, compilation albums that Mattel would, re- would release of like random songs that were like hot. You know, oh yes hot wheels they yeah. like, like smash mouth was on there and then there was like avril lavigne and it's like just just these like kind of cheesy compilation albums and the one issue had a bonus disc and that bonus disc was episode four wheel of power yes. <laughs> the only that was the only <laughs> dvd release of that episode it was in australia this whole time so weird oh so this God. guy rips he rips the DVD for us, and there's there it is, high quality copy of it. And we uploaded it to the Tesla's Cube YouTube channel all, all those years, and, <laughs> and it was just, just so just... it was so funny because we were just like all that digging we did, and then it was just like one casual Discord conversation later, and this just this one yeah. guy from Australia was just like, was like, yeah, I got that DVD. And we're like, yeah. what? <laughs> and it even had like uh, was it like different renders and stuff? It had the Street Breed team, all of them together on the disc, and it's like, wait. This is a render that happened. There's other yeah, render like, medias that we've lost. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta wonder if they had planned a video pack for that episode that just never happened. Mm, probably just didn't the, release the early enough. Because I think the, the the issue was that that the movie came out as as far as it being all together. They released that, that be. on DVD before they had a chance to put it on a fourth disc, and they were just that's like, a good ah, point. Just screw it. Yeah, you know, that's a good point because um. Because um, as the show was airing in 2003, they were releasing it on DVD through the video packs, which is like mm-hmm. you might, for those listening who don't know it, you might have seen it or, uh, like on eBay or something. It's like two cars and mm-hmm. then yeah. a DVD and or VHS. And and they released them throughout the year. And then at the end of the year and like during the holiday season, like around Christmas, they released the full DVD where they advertise it as a quote unquote movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's a good point. That like by the time that that video pack was ready to release, they probably already had the full thing. Ready yeah, which is like, what's the point? So, but they they put it on an Australian CD thing. Yeah, for so. some reason, <laughs> I, it's it's like one of those strange marketing ploys. It's like, oh, we have this. I ah, just throw it's it like, at them. Just throw it. It's, it's free ah, give it to old Aus- Give it to old Australia, bloody <laughs> hell! <laughs> oh my gosh, I mean, I think I I had said to cobalt one time because he's australian he was i was like wait y'all apparently in australia had all of these different things he's like i didn't know about this either <laughs> it's like what is what is happening here everyone's confused <clears throat> as far as um as far as like b- about your question like some of the most interesting finds that are public i mean obviously as far as the season two is always the most interesting to me but mm-hmm. one thing that's that was really interesting was um stunt strikers Oh, um, that? <laughs> some of you might know what that is. Some of you might not. Um, to some of you, it was just a McDonald's promotion, but it was more than that. Uh, okay, so some context. Back when we first started like research in like 2017, there was a big rumor going around in the community that there was some sort of promo for the fifth Acceleracers movie mm. that was out there somewhere, and it turned out to be not true. Uh, of course. Uh, but we tr- tried to track down the source of like where this came from, and it turned out it was someone tr- uh, getting in contact with a uh, a member of the crew and at Mainframe. It was co-director William Lau. Uh, mm. He directed Breaking Point, and um, so I sent a message to William Lau asking him about uh the continuation of accelerators and this is before all the season two stuff so to us it yeah. was accelerators five we didn't you know uh we didn't know about that at the time and he just started going on about stunt strikers like he missed he mistaken what i was talking about as stunt strikers hmm. because uh accelerators season two was canceled as the toy line was being developed 
no animation was put into production. But uh, mainframe yeah. didn't even know the series was supposed to continue <laughs> because it was it was always a four movie contract, and they yeah. wanted to renew it for renew the contract for another season. That's how it works in TV, and mm. um, they didn't get to do that. So I think me and William Wow really confused each other, and it was just like so. Is like this Stunt Strikers thing like Sellers of season two or what? But no, it turned out it was a whole different show with a different canon with different characters that was oh. supposed to happen and was canceled during pre-production. So uh, between Acceleracers and Battle Force 5, there was a whole other show that was canceled. And it was called Stunt Strikers, and it starred this character named Blaze Wheelie. Yes, oh, that's real. Oh, yes. And uh, they reused the Thunderblade design again. Uh, this was before... It was Rogue Hog in the main line. Mm-hmm. So this was the first time they like recycled that design. And uh, it was like them fighting aliens that would cross between dimensions. It was like it was almost Jeez. like a is it's sort of like Battle Force Five esque. It was like the some of the early ideas for that kind of shining through, mm-hmm. but they did a test animation at mainframe. And um that it's never been made public. Um, he said they would have to get permission from Mattel to release oh, that. So, okay. so we're never going to see that. Gotcha. Uh, yep. That's not happening. <laughs> but it's in the vaults at mainframe. And I think, so knowing the fact that, you know, we were confused on what we were talking about because I was asking about Acceleracers and he was talking about a completely different show. Uh, it makes sense that probably the other person who asked, you know, mistook what he said as it's an Acceleracers promo oh. or uh yeah, that's that's in their vault but it's not it was a completely different show that none of us knew about so through searching for the accelerators continuation we found out about a completely different show <laughs> that was canceled during pre-production and had a of test course. animation done and uh they they canceled the show uh to make way for speed racer in 2008 oh okay uh and then some of the similar vague concepts of like battling aliens kind of made mm-hmm. its way into Battle Force Five because a lot of like what was designed was the same uh, yeah. people designers at Mattel. Uh, Mark Jones, if you visit Mark Jones Instagram, he did end up posting uh, pictures of some prototypes and some concept art from Stunt Strikers. Oh, and he's I and did he, not know that he talks about the Hot Wheels show that never was. Huh. Uh, and that was after our discovery, so that was very surprising when that happened. Wow. Because, uh, so it, it's all public info now. But the funny part about Stunt Strikers was, even though it was canceled, they still had a Happy Meal deal with uh, McDonald's, McDonald's, and yep. and they still did it anyway. <laughs> so the only thing of Stunt Strikers that made it into production was the Happy Meal. Uh, and uh, William Lau has said that. Uh, what they did in the like they handed off their work in progress concepts and designs and stuff to uh, another team who developed the comics and and the cars mm. and whatnot for the uh for the McDonald's Happy Meal promotion. So okay. What's in the Happy Meal promotion is probably not what the show would have ended up being. I mean there's definitely some similarity some concepts in there, but they yeah, they took they took uh, unfinished work and contextualizes it okay for for the happy meal thing okay. if that makes any sense that is interesting oh my gosh but yeah super interesting that. like oh there was another show that existed just, that we had no idea show. about <laughs> that's great i think it to be fair i'm glad speed racer stuff came out though because yeah the speed I, racer deal is one of my favorite things from hot wheels definitely speed yeah. racer is the speed racer movie is like my favorite movie it's best I, I, I love tier. collecting it's top tier. i love collecting those cars but it, it would be interesting to see an alternate universe where stunt strikers happened and there was no battle force 5 that would be so weird oh my gosh yeah i mean or technically it would be battle force 5 i don't know i mean it's like it would be like the fans from battle force 5 would have been stunt tri- striker fans maybe or something like yeah that. probably probably that's interesting i know th- there was a character in stunt strikers named zoom <laughs> which there you go got got i don't re- know too much recycled. about battle force 5 though so there's a character in battle force 5 named zoom so okay i you know what is funny i was thinking of the i think a nicholas cage movie or something 
I don't know, some <laughs> some guy. The bad guy's name is Zoom. Anyway, that's really oh. off topic. <laughs> that is so off. Um, yeah. <laughs> Nick Cage is just like, stop right there, villain. You're like. A- <laughs> You're like a really poorly thought out character from a Hot Wheels cartoon. <laughs> oh. The 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 team I'm Hot Nicholas Wheels Cage. team Hot Wheels be like. <laughs> Poor team, team Hot, Hot Wheels. Wheels is Team Hot Wheels is interesting because it it was kind of like an a successful failure. <laughs> what do you mean? It was <laughs> Team Hot Wheels was was kind of ahead of its time. It was it was meant to be like an ARG. Do you know what an ARG is? No, please explain. Uh. Uh, now what is it off the top of my head an arg it's alternate reality game okay so it's it's like yeah it's like uh so so what what team hot wheels was was to create a fictional uh narrative around the history of hot wheels that there's this hot wheels testing facility that was top secret and then they when they develop their track sets, they test them in real life first and then size them down. That was oh, like oh okay, and 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 it was all top secret until now. Now they're revealing themselves and going mm-hmm. public, and and they built a bunch of real life Hot Wheels cars. Yes, like Bone Shaker, mm-hmm. Rip Rod, Bad to the Blade, the Rocket El Camino, and oh, um, they did all these like internet shorts of like stunts and stuff, and and. They did like the the world's best driver movie, and mm-hmm. they did all the merchandise and everything. And then they had the real life stunts that they actually did, where they yeah they the, the, the fearless of the five hundred, where they yeah the fearless of the five hundred, where they beat the record for the longest jump. And uh, I, I I love the fact that like on that the slope, uh, whatever they have supporting the slope has a big door on it, like the track is coming oh, down from a door <laughs> that is if you oh if, i have not seen that if you look up that stunt on youtube you'll know what i'm talking about yeah and then they did the double loop dare at the x yeah, games that's the and, one i know uh, the double loop dare is the one i know and the thing was is that no one understood what this was because they just didn't distribute it the media correctly mm-hmm. go figure uh people didn't see the web shorts really i didn't even people know didn't, about them until like yeah people didn't ago. understand like the point of team hot wheels but it was it was still kind of a success because of the stunts that they did in real life. Mm-hmm. So everyone remembers the fearless of the five hundred double loop there, but no one understands like why they did that in the first place. <laughs> Anything else <laughs> so, about it? It's really interesting. Team Hot was was basically an ARG before ARGs were cool. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. So what are your thoughts on? Um other other excella tubers what is some of your favorite ones what do you think about like the what is your favorite type of excella tuber in terms of theory well there's or... this one guy there's this one guy named jc square oh, I've... Oh, and and he is such a square <laughs> let me tell you dang hate that guy oh okay okay <laughs> <laughs> he's he is the problem with the accelerators fan no i'm just kidding <laughs> I'm, I'm subscribed i'm i'm a i'm a jc squared subscriber uh Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate I like, it. <laughs> I like Vulcan Vugan, obviously, you know, mm-hmm. uh, spoilers, what have you. I don't, I actually don't find myself watching like a ton of Acceleracers content. Mm. So, what content do you watch then? Like, what, what are some things that you would like to watch or what genres of stuff? I don't know. Uh, as far as Acceleracers go, a lot of times what I make is what I want to see. Mm hmm. Yeah. So I've been I've been doing these uh, like merch reviews on on Tesla's Cube, like reviewing the track sets and the yeah, toys and whatnot. Yeah. And I I I wish I could do more than what I've done because it's been really sparse and I really haven't been working on it. But mm. um, me and Jomo have another episode planned soon. Uh, okay, I just Sweet. I because we did the uh, the ultimate track set video. Yeah, uh, and that was like six months ago. It feels like yesterday. And um, we've been wanting to do more. Mm. it's just we we both work we have jobs and and yeah. we're away most of the week and we just don't have the time and energy but but um i just recently got the vertical stunt set accelerus's vertical stunt set which is the slot car set oh yeah yeah i just recently picked one of those up and i've yet to open it and test it so Ooh. i'm waiting 
I'm waiting to do it on camera with Jomo, and I think we're going to try and yeah, do a review. I want to see that. That that sounds super awesome. I the eBay seller, the eBay seller sold it to me. Says it works. Uh, I really hope he's right about that. Because if we start mm. filming and we put the cars on the track and they don't work, it's going to be really awkward. <laughs> Man, oh, I want, I want, I, I want to see that. I want that. Sounds yeah, really I want, cool. I want to, I want to cover all the track sets and all the like hyperpods and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That makes sense. Like peop- things that like people aren't used to seeing because like they're kind of hard to get your hands on. Yeah. Like I want to show that kind of stuff off so people can really like see it in detail. Yeah, yeah. I think the one of my favorite ones is definitely your Dior Two review, and then mixing that yes. with the Legends Tour. Like how you just go I'm to pretty... Legends Tour as for the whole <laughs> intro piece, and you're like, oh yeah, and then here's this one eighteenth diecast version of it. <laughs> yeah, I was. I'm really proud of that one. Uh, that was that was fun. Because when that whole date came up to do that, uh, it was around the time I was making that video. And it's just like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool? Like, Mm -hmm. did we just cut to a shot of me in front of the real Dior 2? And I'm like, they made it in real life. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah, that was so good. That was so clean, too. So cleanly edited. How did they make a casting that big? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I I love that video. That is a good one. Um, What is... That brings me to the point of what what is some of the really cool things about meeting community members IRL at these events like like Legends Tour and stuff. Yeah, um if you watch the beginning of that uh 119 scale DR2 video, we remake the uh scene of Vert discovering DR2 where he's like, Whoa, mm-hmm. check it out. Yeah. And the guy that did that with me, that's Trub. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, sometimes uh, you know, I th- it started with I mentioned before with how I started with the community I was friends with a, a guy named Danny, uh, Descart Power underscore Pipes, whatever name he goes by. Uh, he's not super active in the community anymore, but he visits now and then. But him and I used to be pretty close, and um, he does. He didn't. Turned out he didn't live far from me. So that same toy show I brought up earlier, where I go to it every year, it's in my hometown. Uh, he came with me one year, and that was like the first time like I met an internet friend in real life, and it was very surreal and. Hmm. that's become sort of a tradition that anytime that toy show comes up, I invite server members that are nearby and I mm. get to meet some people. And yeah, that's sweet. Uh, I, I met, you know, Trub and, and some like Avian and, and professor mm-hmm. and some other, uh, Suna, some other discord members. I mean, maybe people on YouTube listening don't know who I'm talking about, but it's kind but of the like people a, in the discord. I think, no, yeah. Those the people in, discord, in a discord no. talking about people in a discord server, but basically, um, yeah, and with the Legends Tour, it was like I was going to an area with uh, where some of the server members lived nearby that area, and we just kind of met up, and we had a whole Excella like, squad there, and it was it was great. <laughs> that is sweet. <laughs> so, I think it's, yeah, it's, I, I it's on the so occasions weird. that I get to yeah on the occasions I get to meet other Excellers fans like that who I've talked to on the Discord, it's it's surreal and it's 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 uh, wholesome and fun. Yeah. I wish I could do that with with my area. It feels like I've only ever had one other person I think that that knows or is in the Discord server. I think um, first time it was someone in the Discord server. The second time, one even a guy in the Discord server, just some other guy uh, that was just there from Dallas and he had traveled and he was just showing up. He showed up in my merch and I was like, "Yo, what's up?" i don't know who you are <laughs> but it was really it's awesome. very cool to just see uh fans that are so disconnected or that are now connected but were disconnected sort of getting introduced back into this um i feel like i feel like going out in public and seeing someone wearing your own merch is like the same feeling you get when you're like race someone online on hot wheels unleashed and they're wearing a livery that you made <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, crazy yeah, it to me to me to see someone else wear my stuff is so different because I'm I'm pretty much the only one that wears my stuff. I feel like in my area. Yeah. And you forget and that, that like there are people out there who enjoy the things you make and it's like <laughs> people participate it's in crazy. what I create. Exactly. Exactly. I think it was it was just crazy to see someone actually have one of my shirts on and yeah. and enjoying it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I made that. And he's like, well, you made that. I'm like, yes, that was me. That was me. That's this guy right here and the vert wheeler and everything. Yes, that's me. <laughs> I'm that that's guy. Awesome. That reminds me of like when I first started uh, playing uh, Hot Wheels Unleashed when the game came out and I was getting involved with the community and racing a lot. I mm. kept getting messages from random people just being like, you're that guy from the YouTube channel. Like, people, <laughs> people participate in the things I create. Oh, I'm not funny. used to that. 
That's that's on Roblox, dude, for me. Every time I, I go on the Roblox or I'm streaming Roblox or something, it, my server fills up. <laughs> for with just random people i don't know <laughs> and i bet it I, I bet it was super surreal when you went to the legends tour and brian freaking benedict is like it's jc squared i had I, no I your idea that guy i was just blown away i mean you, you would see think, it on my face it's just like huh what you would think that me? you you would think that you would fanboy over him, but he right, started right. fanboying over you. Right. What's funny is before that, I, I was walking over there. So so just to give some context, this is the Legends Tour in Houston, Texas last year in October. And I was just walking over. This is like the very beginning of the day. I talked to the guy that was taking care of the Dior too. Like he's cleaning it and stuff. Uh, he, he was there the last time, two years ago in 2019, where um my dad was or he cursed at my dad basically um for for asking about like verwheeler to get in it and i was like dad dad no 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 it's raining right now like this is a bad time in general like it was just it was <laughs> very stressful time for those guys because people were putting their babies on the car and he's like get your babies off the car <laughs> start opening start opening the hatch like can, can i can i sit and he's like get get so so Don't i touch. hold yeah i was like i hold no ill will to this guy i i understand it's a tough job to try and take care of some cars um it, it, funnily enough he didn't know that the 118th dr2 existed which was really really fun to, to show that's him hilarious that. but besides that i i went over there to the judging area and my dad was like oh yeah go see this famous person this this rapper or whatever um i, I don't remember what his name was i don't oh, yeah, know who he was, was that, really yeah i I forget his name too. It's, and like he's really big that. in H Town. Like he's a big H Town yeah. guy. And it Local. makes sense for him to be there. But for me, I'm just like, no, I want to meet that guy right there. That's Brian <laughs> Benedict. I know that guy. That guy I want to meet. And and for and, those listening who don't know, uh, <laughs> Brian Benedict is the uh, lead design lead at uh, Hot Wheels. Right. Right. Now. right. And, and he got and his. He was, it was him. He got and his Matt start. Gabe, I think that were there. So Matt Gabe he got was his also. start. He got his start at Hot Wheels with Accelerators. Yes. So he was. Yes. He played a role in the development of the series. Yeah. He he had joined the team when when they were doing that. Yeah. Um. So when when I went over there to the area or whatever that they were about to start judging, um, some of the cars they were doing like their pre meetup and they had their cameras rolling and stuff. They were filming for their social medias, and and I was just pointing. Yeah, I want to meet him. And I was talking to my dad. And I, was, I pointed at him and I was like, I want to meet him. And I think one of the one of the staff or whatever saw my finger pointing that way, and he he taps Brian's shoulder, and he and he points towards me. And I'm like, why? Hey, he you towards me? Is Get he just noticed cloud. that I just want? I thought I thought he was like, oh yeah, there's a fan over there. He probably wants to say hi to you or something. And then I just see Brian like just start like walking over there like. I watch your stuff. I'm like, huh? <laughs> You're that me? guy. <laughs> me? This little old me? Uh, watch his. What do you mean, me? <laughs> I couldn't. Ima- I couldn't imagine the feeling, just like seeing Brian notice you and then just start marching over. No, for real, <laughs> for real. I was expecting to try and like we like weed my way into into the crowd, yeah. try and just try, say hi, try and like, get senpai hi. to notice you. It's like, hey, I'm I'm dressed up as Vert really. You know, I was really I'm a really big fan and stuff. I know you're Brian <laughs> Benedict and. And all that. No, he, he saw comes up you to me. like a hawk. He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> he comes up to Bert me, Wheeler, which was way crazier. And and um, I, and I bet he probably had more to say. But I just I felt like I kept interrupting him or something because I'm just like fanboying. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. That's fair. Um, I'd, I'd probably be like that too. <laughs> so I was just like, I don't know what's happening. This is the craziest day of my life. Um, so if, if people really want to know the whole story behind that, there, I've made a video on it. Uh, yeah, he, that's just it was of, all. Head. It was all caught on camera. It so. was all on camera. Um, I had my friend film that day. I was like, "Hey, come out with me." You Bless got a 4K that man. camera. Uh, Shane Jacob. For those that don't know, he's the best friend. So, uh, yeah, it was just a crazy moment. So, what <laughs> what experiences uh have you had at the Hot Wheels Legends tour and stuff? What is your what is your experiences there? Um, when we were filming that scene with Trub, where he's like, "Whoa, check it out with the Dior yeah. 2. Um, there was a couple, uh, around our age, like maybe early twenties, there was a couple standing there like waiting for us to finish. And, uh, mm-hmm. when we were done, I, I turned off my camera and the dude walks up to me and he's like, 
people have no idea how much this car means to people like us. And I was like, <laughs> yes. hell yeah, dude. Heck yes. <laughs> Love he it. knew what we were doing. Yes. He knew oh what we gosh. were doing. That's awesome. I, man. Uh, and I had this, I had this Teku shirt on uh, while yes. I was there. So I, that didn't help either. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, the it red did help. Bubble. <laughs> the red bubble. For, for those that don't know, I think, that shirt came out on Redbubble first, and I then had the idea to do my own Redbubble as well. And so it's just, then Vulcan did his, and now we all got Redbubbles, and we're selling Accelerators merch everywhere. So <laughs> links in the description. <laughs> just don't tell Mattel. Don't tell Mattel, yeah. Uh, I don't think tell Mattel we're make, you're making money on listening. their property. <laughs> I was listening to the, the podcast. They don't with, care. With Jeff Gomez and uh, Alan... Bur- Burelski or something and he was alan was talking to jeff about jeff owning one of my pieces with scrim tech or scrim corp on oh it. really that's awesome. yeah and so so what what he says alan says to him it's like mattel didn't make any money off of that did they and and he's like nope no they didn't and and what's nope. interesting is technically it's jeff's stuff <laughs> that yeah, I, I mean he created it yeah it's his stuff that he bought from me because like <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, I mean, he didn't so, design the logo, but he came up with the concept. You yeah, know? And, and like all of the 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 apparently the scrim thing is is from his D and D campaign. So it's like, oh, it, really? It means something to him more so than just Hot Wheels. Oh, World I didn't Race. know that. Yeah, I did so not know good that. Good podcast, by the way. Go check out that big, podcast big, uh, big walking Solaris Encyclopedia research guy. Didn't know that scrim was part of. Jeff Gomez's D and D. It was party. it was like two weeks ago that he released <laughs> that episode. So, go, uh, okay. yeah. Uh, for those that don't know, that is the Square Corner podcast. No, wait, that's mine. Uh, is the corner? <laughs> it is the uh, st- uh, st- uh, Cosmic Long Street podcast. Corner. Cosmic Street Corner podcast. Yes, that one. That's theirs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! That was... Need yeah, like to something. Crazy, crazy how. Uh intellectual property ownership works in our capitalist system it's like mm-hmm. guy creates a concept mattel capitalizes on it then mattel doesn't do anything with it then forgets about it some yeah. some some kid makes merch and then the guy buys merch of his own idea that was passed <laughs> on from person to person <laughs> it, is, it is very interesting isn't it i think it's what's funny is is that i've had to probably redo that logo and he probably has that logo as as like a as an asset or something that they use their maybe i say maybe i say maybe if if they use it in like the comics yeah i I guess probably if they use it in the comics maybe i know know he has the the hds of the all the comics and everything and all the Mm -hmm. promo art but you know i don't know about that one Uh, that one was taken off with kadeem's leg from mainframe so mainframe probably (laughs) would be the one that has that asset probably deleted it by now if if I'm being honest, I don't think so. So that, that one guy's like, you know, j- did Mattel make any money off of that? It's like, no, but it's like, hey, Mattel, y- you know, you could be. You could be. Exactly. You could, you be. could be. And, and I think one of the but one you of the don't. interesting points is that they brought up one time is that Twilight was really big. And at Comic Cons and stuff, girls would come up with like their own custom made shirts of like Team Jacob or I don't remember. But it, yeah. the companies that made the movies didn't make those <laughs> shirts because they thought it, it, it was dumb and stuff. But then they realized, oh, we're just missing out. We, we're not listening to the fans enough, I guess. So there's that sort of interesting dialogue that can happen through, yeah. through marketing. Did they, start, did they start making like Team Edward and Team Jacob shirts officially then after that? Oh, I'm sure. Like a hot topic, see, I bet they sold them. See, the thing with Mattel is they're like, they're like too out of touch and inept to, to like to have that sort of dialogue and respond like that it's like if if, that. if it was right. mattel in that position and they were like look at this shirt i made there'd probably be like a sniper in the corner of the room like take him out <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> take him out <laughs> they're like it's like when that one when that one spanish uh, community guy sent his fan game to mattel and they're like oh change yes. everything yes change and, everything yes don't have the orange <laughs> track you can't have orange the track, track cannot be game. orange it's and like, hey, like, that. like, look at this thing I created. Like, would you mind like investing in it and mm-hmm. making it just like, no, take this down right now. <laughs> it's like, as long as you don't tell them they're making stuff and you just sort of don't. Yeah, do don't that, seek it, out. They Mattel. don't. They don't really care. Um, when when the they were part. doing when the when the Accelerpedia guys were trying to pass off the whole the edge thing, they were trying really hard to get Mattel involved, and Mattel was just like, we 
no no <laughs> no <laughs> it just did not no. work <laughs> oh that is hilarious so shifting gears a little bit uh not too much just into how did you get involved with doing collecting in general and sort of uh what what got you to do like sending your power rage custom to 3d bot maker and what what did you think of that result by the way of the race uh i was very disappointed uh yeah, <laughs> I was like, uh, uh, yeah i've had this conversation with a couple of of, of uh, fans or friends of mine that are fans of accelerators and yeah, really the only reason I did it was just because I wanted to get Accelerace's represent- representation mm-hmm. on the, his channel. And, and I think um, I think maybe Adrian didn't take it very well. <laughs> Adrian? Is that the runner? That, the that's his name, yeah. That, that's okay. uh, 3D Pop. See, I didn't know that. I don't know that. Because <laughs> um, like, I sent him the car, and I, I sent... I, I had a, an extra trading card, a Power Rage trading card. Oh, yeah. I sent, it, I sent that with the car to give extra context and, and mm. it was just he yeah, pit me he, up against uh, a, a track a track record setter like i was not given a chance whatsoever <laughs> yeah that and it was really disappointing because my dad and i put a lot of work into that car and yeah. then it just felt like and, it felt uh, like a little bit like when you when you're in the was a boy scout derby or something and then your car just does awful after yeah. putting like beautiful work into it yeah pretty much and and it was like um there, when you at the time when you uh, submitted a car, there was like an option to like have the car sent back to you after the race, or let him keep the car so he can put it in the background of other races and videos because mm-hmm. he has like that whole kind of setup. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I and I put the option keep the car so you can use it in the background. I never, never saw that it. car on that channel after that race, and I was I'll like, just man, email I it back just... saying, just give it back to me. Just give it back to me. You're not going to use it. Like, if it, yeah. I get that you don't want to use it, but I it's, never bothered. It's a nice little. What's funny is it's. it's I didn't just, want to bother him about it. It's whatever. I'm. I would be like, give me back my car, you dummy. You didn't use it for anything yeah. else. <laughs> be like, just give it back. If you don't want to use it, just give it back. Like, come on. It, it's. You obvious. know, it's funny. Like, if I'm gonna steer this back to like the market, like at that time, it wasn't that long ago. It was like 2020, maybe 2019, 2020. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was 2019. At the time, it was it was not a difficult thing to like get a power rage yeah, and, it's like and drill its rivets and 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 customize a power rage nowadays you'd be lucky to get a, your hands on a power rage for like 50 bucks yeah that's that's for sure you know <laughs> power crazy. rages were disposable for me not that long yeah. ago yeah what I, happened I understand that it's I, you know and that makes me unleashed think, uh, why don't power rage was, collectors get involved with that it's just yeah pa- power know. rage was released in unleashed and and i was so i went to go get a, like an extra power rage and i just couldn't get one i just gave Dang. up Dang, that stinks. I was like, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes that makes annoying sense. But it is one of the things that I want to ask you about when it comes to, to collectors and stuff and some of the older collectors, what they think about just just the die cast in general. You know, do they do they even like the die cast of fantasy models or, or like the cool ones, you know, like the ones that look like real cars in a way? Most collectors I know don't like fantasy at all but Mm. um you know there there's always and i'm talking about uh general hot wheels collectors Mm -hmm. not just accelerators because i am involved in my local scene as far as collecting goes because i I collect more stuff than accelerators and and i'm Mm -hmm. I'm saying this for context for the audience um and yeah uh collectors don't like fantasy and and the ones that i see that that do make exceptions it's usually like like oh yeah i hate because the, the thing about like fantasy is that uh, a lot of people are just ignorant of how of how many cool fantasy cars there are out there. Mm-hmm. Like people just don't know about slingshot and muscle tone yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, because there's just there's so many Hot Wheels cars you you can't. It's like an exposure thing. Mm-hmm. And so uh, a very common thing that I come across is when I talk about this topic with with adult collectors is they're just like, yeah, I hate fantasy cars. They're all ugly, but that Night Shifter is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's oh, like oh okay yeah that one yeah or like rip rod or it's what's like, that new I, I one? Do like, mod rod mod I do rod like, is so popular I, yeah yeah mod rod which is which is great to see yeah I, I love seeing new fantasy cars come out and, and collectors really grasp onto it 
like what happened mm-hmm. with Bone Shaker when that came out. Yeah. And you know, I've had people oh, I do like Drifta and I had to I had to say just like there's a whole world out there of mm-hmm. cool fantasy cars like that. Yeah. Yeah. And people it's just like, don't it's know. It's not just it. the wacky stuff. It's it's yeah, and, like, like I love the wacky stuff think, in, in its own right, but people think fantasy and they think street winner and tricera yeah. truck and <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's like i don't really that. have anything against those either like those are obviously really good for kids and and stuff and they look yeah cool. i mean it's it's nice to have that variety but you can't deny that uh mattel is like or hot wheels is, is going they're like overdoing the gimmick cars right now yeah yeah to the point where it's really t- it's really tarnishing the uh the reputation of fantasy and cementing mm. it as like this thing that's just for kids mm. but i would say sometimes it's not like devantinator just came out and so did raijin express and, and like those are now fantasy it's it really is just a mixed bag it's like you really get some good quality new die casts and uh i i don't know i think i wonder yeah, I just what got, kids um, actually get i just got low lux uh this past week and man is that thing cool mm-hmm. I, I i i run into kids a lot in the hobby and it's interesting to see what they like mm-hmm. and let me tell you um you don't see kids playing with the 55 uh chevy bel-air gasser or the, yeah. the Datsun 510 it just doesn't yeah, happen th- yeah and i tell adult collectors a lot that like what if you guys are just always buying this stuff up and people just can't get their hands on them kids the kids growing yeah. kids growing up now are not going to be nostalgic for these castings and they're mm-hmm. going to die out yeah and that's why with because i mean this sort of stuff was around the 2000s too with with people who were only like licensing that's mm-hmm. why now with the younger collector generation up and coming who are our age early 20s late teens they're into fantasy because yeah. when they're growing up in the 2000s, that's what was available on the shelves, and that's yeah. what was being pushed in the marketing. And it's yeah. very interesting to see that. So, so I mean, give it 10 years, fantasy might make a, uh, a comeback. Mm. You never know. Very interesting. Uh, what is your Who is your favorite designer at Hot Wheels? And just all of Hot Wheels. Oh, it doesn't man. have to be this year. <laughs> that's a very difficult question. It, it's hard <laughs> to choose one because... I mean, for me, uh, it's not. But I know it's harder I've, for I've others. I've got a couple... <laughs> I've got a couple. I mean, the first guy that comes to mind is Nathan Proach, obviously. Of course. Everyone loves you know, him. He's my favorite. <laughs> Dior 2. Exactly. Slingshot, 16, uh, Angels. 16 Angels, Spine right. Buster. You can, uh, he, he, his whole catalog is literally nameable. I mean, you got Toe Jam. Yeah. His Bo entire Hart. catalog is nothing his... but iconic <laughs> fantasy cars from that <laughs> era. Good. Like His boat one. Yeah. Oh, what is that one? At the the sail? Boat one. The one with the sail? Well, wasn't that like the last one he did? Yeah, it's the last one he did with the pirate. It's like Bon Bon Voyage or something. Bon Voyage, like that. yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, oh I think gosh. it was a play on Bon Voyage, like it was a pun, but I forget. But I know what it looks like. I have it pictured in my head. But mm-hmm. uh, if I have to echo, uh, if I have to echo what Vulcan said in the last episode, uh, Dwayne Vance. Uh, yeah, I love Dwayne's work. Uh, Dwayne is good. He's just he has such a unique style that's very him, mm-hmm. and. Um, like when he did Devance Nader, I loved that casting. Oh, yeah. so I was like, "This is so Dwayne. Yeah. This is the most Dwayne thing I've ever seen. <laughs> this it's, is the most Dwayne yeah. thing. Imagine <laughs> being like Dwayne Vance, The Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> that does like the eyebrow <laughs> raise. Uh, <laughs> uh, I really, I really like, um, I really like Eric Cern. Mm, uh, yes, he was the one that he was the one that introduced he told uh, me how tuner to culture. Say his name, <laughs> Eric Cern. Eric Cern. I, I never knew how to it. say his name. <laughs> I I think I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know, but um, don't worry, he'll come back. Uh, he back. he's the one that introduced uh, tuner culture in the Hot Wheels, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's interesting. I think what makes fantasy so good in that era is the lack of licensing, because I think we're I think. Hot Wheels is spoiled with their amount mm. of licensing deals these days. Whereas back then, because the thing about Hot Wheels is that it always, while they do do their own thing, it, it does reflect culture in a lot of ways, mm-hmm. specifically car culture. Yeah. And the thing about uh, that era and, and the eras before it too, is like when you want to reflect something, 
with limited licensing that that you don't have, you have to Hot Wheels has to put their own spin on that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah, that's why you have twenty four seven instead of just an RX seven. Yeah, and, and like like for example, like Second Wind or mm. uh, the Dixie Challenger. Yeah, you know that yeah. was their take on the Gen Lee. Uh, so when they first got into the, the tuner culture thing, it was like, you know, late nineties, early two thousands, fast and furious was getting big yeah, and the tuners yeah. were big into the scene. And, and it was like, you know, the, the first, they didn't have the licensing for those, those cars. So the, the first tuner hot wheel we ever got was showstopper. Oh, pretty. So and that pretty. car for us, younger fantasy guys, that car is just iconic. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was on the packaging for the 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 cars back the cars at that Get time. Get out of here, showstopper! Heck yeah! <laughs> yeah, it's it was it was always, and, and when when they're always doing their own take. Now, obviously, you know, a couple years later, they did do a Skyline and they did a mm-hmm. Sylvia once they finally got some some licensing. But it they never stopped with like the. I mean, we got MST Zazuka and Tantrum, yeah. and Track yeah, Tune, super tuned. and and then of course. Uh, all the cars and accelerators. Now, uh, Eric Cern did Showstopper. He did MST Suzuka. He mm-hmm. did Power Rage. Yeah. He did Drift yep. Tech, Battle Spec, yeah. Super Tuned, Muscle mm-hmm. Tone. I could go Dude on and on. Insane. These are all iconic cars. Yeah. And and he uh, still loves it too. He he loves showing off his yeah. collection on, yeah. on his Instagram still. And he's retired, by the way. For those that don't know, he's he's no longer. Yeah, he's there, but... yeah. A lot of those iconic designers from the 2000s are no longer there. Mark Mark Jones is there. Dwayne Vance yeah. is still there. Well, Dwayne Vance uh, came back after. Yeah, he yeah he came back after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that that's it. I think, and and when they're always doing their own take on on things instead of just just straight up just making what exists, like oh mm-hmm. here's Nissan Silvia and it's it's perfect proportions and it's yeah it's clean, bro, and it's yeah. clean. <laughs> or like, or here's or here's just the mystery machine. Oh here's yeah, the Batmobile. Yeah, you know. I, I still when you're like doing, those. yeah. When you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool and all, but they're so hyper obsessed with it that there's they've lost their identity because mm. when they're when they're limited on licensing and they have their own spin on on uh, things and culture like that, their brand has a more distinct identity. Mm-hmm. So it's not they're more replicas. original. You know, it's not replicas. Yeah, it's not stuff. just replicas. It's it's Hot Wheels. Yeah, I think. Yeah, they have their the own better... identity. One of the better new ones is now GT Scorcher, which is like a Nissan Skyline yes. uh, GT car. And I love that people casting. love that thing. And it makes sense. Yeah. It's their take and it's, on a Skyline. It's, yeah, it's exactly what I just described, where it's like yeah. they take something from car culture and they put a Hot Wheels spin on it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, and, I, and collectors, I, I, I was just at Target like a week or two ago. I saw a guy picking up GT Scorchers yep. with... With all his license stuff in his hand, yeah, and it's I, it's, I it's cool wish, to see. I, I I really like that. Yeah, I always wish they do more super treasure hunts of of some of the fantasy cars as well. Now, yeah, me like too. Some of them, some of them, Street Creeper was a really good one, but a lot of them are just you know <sighs> standard Civic, it. Mazda. When, when it comes to those, those when it comes more. to those, when it comes to those super treasure hunt, like the super hunter bros, you know, those kind of mm-hmm. people I'm talking about. Y- y- when it comes to yeah. those kind of people, yeah. they're they're the ones that are kind of like anything that is remotely unlicensed is just garbage. Yeah. So I know I think like, I sound I found like Fandango and stuff one time and, and a guy was like, Yeah, Fandango's in there. I was like, Oh yeah, I don't want that. Goes, <laughs> goes over there and grabs one. Yeah. <laughs> Which is great for us because it's like yeah. then I'll take it off your hands and we get it for yeah. cheap. But uh, I think uh, another one I, I found was uh, I think Boss Hoss or something. And uh, and and I, some guy was going through the whole box and everything, and he pulled it out and he put it to the side, and he didn't want it. And I was like, "Hey, do you want this one?" He's like, "No." I was like, "That's <laughs> yeah, mine then. <laughs> That's mine then." And, Thank and you. <laughs> nowadays, they they only do a uh, one fantasy casting per yeah. year with the supers. Yeah, and uh, there's there's a lot of super hunting dude bros around where I live, and and people they just complain and complain. I have one car. One car, they'll complain. Yeah. You know what's funny is that like they'll complain endlessly about it, but they'll still buy it. <laughs> it's still worth something. It's a <laughs> they still have like, run. they still have like fifteen of them, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it's funny to me. Um, it, this isn't actually funny. This is a disgrace. So 
at Hot Wheels Legends Tour, when when they start opening new boxes and stuff, and the Walmart for people to go in and like check out oh, the new yeah. stuff, it is it is horrendous how how collectors treat employees. It is disgusting. Oh, yeah. It is it absolutely is disgusting. disgusting the way oh, that yeah. these super hunter treasure hunt bros treat these people because like they're they're just trying to do their job. They're opening it, and then as soon as it's open. There's someone grabbing it, ripping it out of their hands, and mm-hmm. like just ripping stuff out until they find what they're. It's disgusting. Yeah. I was I was disgusted when I first saw this, and I think if you want to friend... be even further disgusted, uh, just... in the show the show that I went to in Philly, um, they didn't even get to open the cases because there were guys there the night before who had found the cases and opened what? them already. So we didn't even get that far. I mean, that is just insane. And, and yeah, what it's just sad. annoyed me it's though sad. is that they don't apologize or anything. They they literally nope. slapped this woman, and then like she fell on they the ground. Slapped a woman. Yeah, th- she fell on the ground in in the Walmart. So you were hit, just standing there at Walmart, hit, like watching all this unfold. Her, hit her thing. I mean, it happened in five seconds. It was so fast. And and this lady hits the one of the Hot Wheels monster truck displays. And like hits her shoulder and she's falling and she's just trying to get out of there at that point. She's like, these people are crazy. There's like five people at this yeah. box on the ground. Like they're all like they're like, like rabid dogs. And, and I just looked at it and I just kept walking. I'm like, are you okay? And she's just okay. Yeah, it is. I'm getting absurd. out of here. Like, I don't want to buy from this type of place. I, yeah, I don't like this type of, of uh You don't want to participate mentality. in that nonsense. No, I, I don't want to even be known for that. Like it's yeah, so it's and, and and it's it is Ugh. frustrating it is frustrating as a collector because i have a lot of like uh collectors and 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 super dude bros in my area who are awful like that and start mm. fights and get banned and, and and it's like i go to walmart and i start digging through a dump in and and all of a sudden i'm getting like dirty looks from the the walmart employees you know? yeah i know it's like i don't want to be like that it's like <laughs> and it's no, like i was just looking I, through it like it's like it's okay i'm not gonna hurt you i just want, I, know. I just want a little shiny toy car leave me alone i know it's don't, just, ki- don't kick me out i've never felt comfortable sometimes dealing with with them i i know sometimes yeah i went to a, a hot a walmart and i think you remember the the hot wheels like uh, garage packs and stuff like with the premium garage packs that are like 20 bucks or something they come with three skylines and a and a transport oh yeah 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 yeah. so 10 10 of those were returned with different mainline cars oh swapping yes 10 of them yeah and i had to go up to one of the employees i was like trying to find some employee i'm like these guys cannot be selling and it was these. the they don't it was know. the white skyline one yes and and these of employees course didn't know that you know it's not supposed to be in there and i had to go tell one of them like hey you guys are getting robbed right now like these people are stealing these straight under you and they had to put just discount codes on 10 of these things they couldn't do anything else about it yeah it's just like, a lot of times they can't because it's like their policy like they're they're just doing what they're told. I know it. It just hurts so much our reputation it, as collectors. It, yeah, it it is sad to see that stuff unfold, and and it, I, it, it, I'm I've grown numb to it at this point because of yeah. the people in my area. I mean, uh, I just just recently there was like a neighboring town to my town, and their Walmart because with the shipping complications right now, there's the the amount of new cases coming in the stores is sparse. Oh yeah, we don't even have any here. There's zero yeah. <laughs> zero and new cases. When they when they do stock a case, it is a crap show. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is <laughs> and, insane. And I heard a story a uh, neighboring town, uh, their Walmart got in a shipment and these two guys got in a physical fight over this new case hot wheels and they were they were kicked out they were banned and they were detained by the police they called the police they were detained can you imagine sitting in the police station hot wheels they're like what guys you have real jobs you don't even need to be reselling hot wheels i know it's bad like yeah that's what's sad too is like the people who do this they don't even keep them they freaking resell them they don't open them what in the world are you doing Imagine ah. being in the police station and so, someone's like, what are you in for? And you're like, I got in a fight over shiny toy cars. <laughs> just, just kind of the guy oh I am, gosh. you know. I think, I I think we edge. should move on from the main line yeah, stuff. I could go, Let, I could go, go on about the, crazy collectors Let's go all day. into RLC thoughts. What are, what are some Red Line Club <laughs> thoughts for you? For me, I still like most of them. I think I think there is, again, that licensing issue. They, they don't have pretty much any fantasy in there. No. 
uh, I mean, yeah. the best thoughts? thing we had was the, the 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 most fantasy thing we had was like the steampunk truck, but that was how many years ago? That was so cool. That was so I never bought one. I wish. Uh, I I this is not the best topic to go on off of the last one because I'm just gonna have like the same uh, strong <laughs> same opinions. Issues. But yeah, I think the RLC is a joke. Oh, I really? really? I do. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm really not a fan. Mm. Uh, now and then there's a cool car there, but yeah, it's just a money grab. Mm. And it's yeah, you and think it's, it's the, too much like sneakers and stuff. Yeah, the, it's very it's it's very hype beast culture, and I mm. just I'm not a fan. <laughs> like, where's the Hot Wheels part? <laughs> yeah, where's, like where's the Hot and they, Wheels? And they do. They've been getting really lazy with it too. They do the same cars over and over again. Yeah, getting two of the same car with just different colors. Like I think they did a purple skyline you, and a blue skyline, and you, you know, have the blue to pay. Shadowing prices like you have to pay for a membership, and you have to actually buy a car to get that membership. Oh no, you don't you have, have to, to do that anymore. Yeah, you not anymore. But yeah. when I tried it, that's how, what it was like. You had to pay. Yeah. For a membership, you get the membership so you're, car. you're paying for a chance, for a chance to overpay for another car that you may <laughs> or may not actually get, and yeah. it's just ridiculous. Like they're 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 not that higher quality than like a premium. I mean, they have the Spectra Flame paint. They probably only cost like a little bit more to produce mm-hmm. than a premium. And I remember like a year or two uh, ago, they did like a. They did a S2K, a Honda S2000. Oh, the gold one? I uh, yeah, gold. I think it was it was in gold. And at the time that that was that sale was happening, there was a premium S2K on the pegs at that moment. It was the gray one that was in the uh, the silver one that was in the uh, yeah. street tuners, the street tuners set. Mm-hmm. And I had one and 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 people were like, "Are you are you going to get the new RLC uh, sale?" And I was like, "No." Like I literally just bought a uh, a, a premium s2k yeah for five dollars at walmart yeah <laughs> yeah i can see that i think the what what makes rlc cool though just as a little devil's advocate i think it's the the different moving parts and stuff that they started adding like yeah some of the, some of the stuff is cool and, like the countosh doors oh, i love the countosh yeah doors. some some of that stuff is is cool but it's just like the whole the whole hype beast thing around it that i hate because it's mm. like people don't participate in it because they like the cars yeah, they participate in it because they wanna they wanna get their hands on the something value. limited. Yeah, yeah, they want the value, not the car. Mm-hmm. And and you see it, you see it a lot now with 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 them making changes, like they're uh, raising the quantity of the cars and they're making yeah. memberships more available. And people are complaining, they're complaining that that these cars are becoming more available. Yeah, I I don't understand that. I think like, it's fun for collectors to be able to get what they want. Yeah, and, like and... it's like. You have like what you have a problem with the fact that they're making more of these because of the demand is higher. It's like, you know, the people who criticize the stuff are the people who only care about value and reselling because mm. it's mm. like, oh, no, now I can't single handedly control the supply. Yeah, now I can't buy up all the supply Section and control five, the 10 wagon <laughs> control the value single handedly. I think the best example of that is seeing uh not the Midas monkey, it's the one that they built the other one. Uh I forgot what it's the called. The hypo hauler? Hypo hauler never the gets red? sold. It's never sold out. It it takes like almost two weeks for it to get sold out on any sort of RLC really? website. The, the red yes. one? Yes, it's. I it's I just, bought mine on I bought mine on eBay. It's so hard for them to try and re-release <laughs> Hypo Hauler, but they did it for Christmas almost every year, and I was like, "This is disgusting. No one wants this car. Like, I don't get it. I, Why I do you, love. Do I do like this? the Hypo Hauler. Okay, this is, maybe this is a. It was one of the opinion. RLC. The only it was one of the only RLC cars that like I bought. I I bought it recently too because it, okay. it was in Unleashed. And I wanted oh, it for yeah, my Unleashed yeah. collection. I think it's and, just... <laughs> and I saw the episode where they built it, and I kind of grew a bit of a of a further appreciation mm. for it because uh, I haven't Vituski, seen that episode. Brendan Vatuski, who designed the the Hot Wheels version, he showed up to the garage and like started helping them build the car, which I thought was kind of cool. Okay, that's really cool. That does bring it into a different light. I think for me, it yeah. was just like, why do they keep? Why is this the only one that looks fantasy? And it's this thing <laughs> for me. Like for me, for me, cars are are are, are more interesting when there's a story behind them. Mm, mm, and yeah. it's like I could not care less about the other releases of the 55 Bel Air Gasser. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, you'll hear me well, talk maybe about the, that maybe car the a lot new because one, it's Triassic one. Well, I'm getting I'm getting to that. that one. I'm okay, getting okay, to okay, that. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. I, I I I really hate the way they release that car over and over and over again because it's yeah. this big cash cow. It's it's our generation's or not generation, but it's it's this era's drag bus. Oh yeah. And uh, but it was like when they did this where Brendan Vatuski built the Triassic five and, mm-hmm. and was documenting it on Instagram. You can yeah, see the process really of him cool. building it. And then he made it into a hot wheel. I really dug that. Yeah, I thought that it was, was cool. Sweet. That was very and, cool. And, and I have a, you know, like a bunch of the Triassic fives in my collection. Cause I'd like that car. It's just mm-hmm. more interesting when there's a story behind it. Not when you just release a bunch of random yeah. colors of it just for, to, to make a couple bucks. Right. Yeah, I think I didn't get the RLC, unfortunately, but I, I was just like, I don't have enough money for this at the moment. But the, yeah, I, I like know the, it's I, becoming a mainline, so I was like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll be good. I can get a mainline. I often joke, I often joke that uh, the Jeanne the Mai 510 wagon is the only 510 wagon that matters. Because, oh, <laughs> yeah. like, I, uh, they, they did it in so a... In, many of it, though, I feel like. The you, zero, well, you know, in that... The zero on it. Yeah, you know, you know in that you were talking about those box sets earlier. There was a mm-hmm. Nissan box set yeah. that had his. I have it. Jenna I do have that one. I, I do. Have I bought that, one. that box set just yeah. for that car. Yeah, because like, Junimai is Junimai. Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, I think he yeah, just recently I mean, sold his Porsche, which he he posted like his story of his Porsche and everything, and I was like, this is so sad, but also really cool to look at <laughs> that he that he sold it. Uh, yeah, like any other five ten wagon, I really don't care about but it's like mm-hmm. that one i gotta yeah. have that one in my yeah collection. because it's it's the junior it's a designer one. car it's yeah. it's it's cool it's like the pontiac uh firebird i think i think it's a firebird yeah like brennan vatuski's firebird yeah, his other fire yeah. yeah it's his firebird and now they have another firebird but it's like different the it's legend store one the legend store one uh i know i know what do you think of the legend store winners in in some respects <laughs> there there's, think... there's another hot topic <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, 2Jet Z and the Nash were great choices. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I would not have picked the Firebird and especially the Volvo Gasser. Mm. I thought the Volvo Gasser was a really dumb choice. Uh, but, then, you know, it's Mattel. Uh, Hot Wheels has a Gasser fetish. You yeah. know, what did you expect? What did you expect? <laughs> Uh, but I, 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 there was a lot of discussion in the Discord when the Firebird won. Yeah, a I lot remember. of back and there. forth about it, mm-hmm. and I was trying to make the point that, like, because I had the same conversation with my brother. Because my, uh, for those listening, my brother is a big car guy. He's involved in car culture. He drives a 1972 Monte Carlo that is a replica of the uh, one from Tokyo Drift. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's sweet, very sweet. And yeah. Um, yeah, his Instagram is a uh, Rolling Thunder something. I don't know if you look for Rolling Monkey Thunder Man. and you see a Monte Carlo, <laughs> look it up. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <You got> it. <laughs> it took a little bit. Yeah, no, I understood. I understood. But uh, the point I was making was, uh, you know, in real life, yeah, that's a cool car, and you would be in mm. awe if you if you saw that in real life. But as a Hot Wheel, it's not all that extraordinary i mean they have a a firebird casting that looks very similar to it already uh so because i kept saying it was a boring choice Mm -hmm. and and the only people who are going to find that car cool are the are like car people who are really into that and understand the innards of the car and what Mm -hmm. makes that build cool and it's like that's the thing of what this just like you know hot wheels losing its identity just being so obsessed with this car culture thing where it's just like you're not making interesting creative castings anymore mm. it's it's them just copying what's there already instead of trying yeah. to build something new in car culture exactly and yeah, yeah I'm, uh contributing something to I, mm. I remember um back in the 2000s and even the early 2010s uh the hot wheels design team actually had a mantra that was uh hot wheels doesn't uh now this is uh not the exact words, but it's yeah. along the lines of a it was like, yeah, paraphrase. That was the word I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was like, you know, Hot Wheels doesn't follow con- culture; it creates culture, mm-hmm. and that's that's the philosophy that got us Acceleracers and even Team mm-hmm. Hot Wheels. Yeah, and af- after Team Hot Wheels, they just they threw that out the window, and it's all licensing now. Yeah, and I think they thought a lot of that stuff was were failures, but I think 
the reason why those things failed was because just poor execution. Like yeah. they just didn't dis- they think... just didn't distribute they didn't distribute media and 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 stuff right. Yeah, I think it goes back to what you said about car culture being a story. Like a big part of why they choose some of the Legends Tour cars is because of the story behind most of the cars. I think the the Firebird is a good one because it's like uh, I think he was building it for someone. It's like it was a really good team build with with uh, I forgot. I think he was building it with someone. And I can't remember. Anyway, though, and he just goes also, to show it, just it how forgettable went, it is. <laughs> well, I was I was gonna say the the story isn't because I just don't remember names. Yeah, very I'm well. I'm just being a little but the, a little weird. <laughs> but the cool thing was, it's like it was showed on like Donut Media and stuff before that yeah. even. Um, and and in a way, I think they just need to tell those stories more with their cars. Because yeah. that's what made it interesting in the first place. I think that that's context. why. I think that's why we. I love Jeff Gomez so much is because he talks about story building within brands and not just like story world. It's not just story world. It's it's your brand. It's what. Yeah, what I brand, mean, that's what, what story is your brand telling. I think that's really what made Accelerators work so well mm-hmm. is because, you know, you can release some fancy looking fantasy cars in a series yeah. no one's gonna buy it yeah but as if soon as i didn't know as soon as you have it by t- torque Maddox, i probably yeah. wouldn't care nearly as much when you have a tv show where you have and it's and it's well well written it's mm-hmm. a good show where the cars are extensions the cars aren't the star of the show they're extensions of the characters yeah and you you know you attach those characters to those cars so like most most people see Spinebuster and they they think it's a fancy car, but mm-hmm. Accelerators fans see Spinebuster and they think wild. That's yeah, market. Spinebuster's my car. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> Spinebuster's my car. It's the meme. It's the meme. There, it's what I they said need the thing. Of. Are you happy? <laughs> yes. Everyone should be applauding. Applause. And Thank have you. It right here. Beep, Thank you. Beep. Beep. Uh, Just put in a sound effect of like an applause. <laughs> or or Thank where's you. race grooves at? I need race grooves to tell me it's his car. And now smart. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! I think it goes back to man the the whole fantasy thing now recently. Uh, just thinking about the Fast and Furious. Um, they released that new show called Spy Racers, right? Yeah. And Spy Racers is like this. I guess it, I haven't actually watched an episode because I just wasn't interested in watching it. No it's one has I'm very <laughs> interested in, but they released these cards with the characters on them. And I was like, Oh, that's yeah. very reminiscent of accelerators, accelerators, battle and force five. It and reminds me a lot of battle force five. Yeah. yeah but people, they, they just sit there because no people one knows are not into it. What they are. It's like, Oh, that's a fake Porsche. Or that's a fake, uh, what is his some some 70 charger you know it's like it's a really and cool i think casting, part of that but it's like part of that is because it's it's like a kind of forgettable netflix series yeah it was it was definitely it was different back then when we didn't have the internet well, i mean we had the internet but media was mostly tv and yeah movies you know when you and wanted people a, a could go TV to the internet like that. and then find more about it it's, yeah it's like, like if they made spy thing. racers if they made Spy Racers in the 2000s, it'd probably be on like Cartoon Network or something, yeah. like like Acceleracers was. And I think people, so many people saw Acceleracers that back in the day because it was on Cartoon Network. Yeah, that reminds you me. Know? Yeah, DreamWorks had that thing with uh, How to Train Your Dragon on there at that one point, the How to Train Your Dragon series, and that was really popular actually. Mm-hmm. And, and literally, it's like the only people I know that actually went out of their way to go watch Spy Racers were people who are into like acceleracers and mm-hmm. like motor city and, and, and battle force five. Yeah. Which is just, you know, not a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Or, I gave or up after like the third community. season, the international community really loves yeah. the fast and furious. So they watched that show, but then they couldn't get the die cast there. So yeah. they're not even, well, getting... I can't even get, they're I not can't even get the diecast the here. Stuff there. It's just like... I can't get the di- I can't get the diecasts here. I was collecting them, and then my target just stopped carrying them. Yeah, because they, no one wants them. Like and, none of the they, stores can sell them. They they kept the same one since like 2019. Yeah, yeah they, they they sent a bunch of the same assortments, just like they did with accelerators. And I'm <sighs> seeing that, like whole I'm seeing thing. posts. <laughs> I'm seeing posts on on Instagram from like T Hunted and like new, uh, like uh, the news mm-hmm. accounts that are, sh- are showing like new Spy Racers castings yeah. coming out, and I'm like, 
Where am I going to get these? Yeah, it's very strange. <laughs> it is. I can't get these. It I still is. don't have. I still don't have the Dune buggy from the second season. Or was that, <laughs> I didn't even was that see the third? it in the store. I don't was remember. Was that the third? I think it was the third season. I think it was the third. I can't it was remember. the newest one. And it looks yeah, I, super sweet. Like, it's a sweet yeah, it's, it's, fantasy they're, car. They're, it's cool stuff. I, the, the newest car I found was the uh, the Hyperfin, the Shashi's mm-hmm. car from season one. And that's like the second assortment. And Again, we're already like back to far the whole past marketing that. Thing. You guys don't market properly. And then you release stuff thinking it's going to sell. And then it doesn't sell. And then yeah, people no, don't no want one, it. It's no Do one knows ever. that Spy Racers exists. Like it's yeah. Maybe if they released that on Lamely Group, right? Lamely hype get Spy Racers <laughs> yeah. up here. <laughs> Lamely hype over Spy Racers, <laughs> if if only, right? What What do you think of um, those other blogs? By the way, like T Hunted and Lamely and uh, Orange Track. What do you think of those? Do you think um, helping? I, I like them. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't follow Lamely. I'm not a Lamely fan. Uh, I'll watch a unboxing he does every now and then, but only mm-hmm. I had this conversation with Ray Screws, uh, because Ray Screws was like, me and Ray Screws agree the fact that like, um, because, uh, because Lamely has connections with Mattel. I mean, he's friends with people. Yeah. yeah. Like he, like he knows Mark yeah. Jones. He has an advantage because like they send him everything that they produce and he gets everything early. So a lot mm-hmm. of times he's always the first guy to review stuff. So if you want to see a new case unboxing, you're like forced to watch lamely mm. <laughs> or lamely. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's, so, that's a ooh, fair point. My... Fair point. Yeah. yeah I think it, it goes back to like, I think that's hot wheels is trying to, I guess, do stuff with collectors without doing it themselves. In a yeah, way, it's, it's like, a very oh, lazy. We, we already found this guy who, who can do it for us. They just throw it at him, and it's yeah, like, yeah, he's our new much. marketer, basically, in a way. But I, I liked I like T Hunted because I get I get my Hot Wheels news from them. Mm. I like uh, I like Orange Track Diecast. Love uh, Orange, Orange Track, Track Diecast. Yeah, Orange, Orange Track is great because they actually have people there that care about the DR too. Exactly, <laughs> and they interview. What's his me, name? So What's his name? Interviewing Brad? me is the best part about it. <laughs> is that guy? Uh, that guy? I think his name's Brad, right? Yeah, I, I think he so. actually I think that's right. he actually respects fantasy. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he I wrote think... that he wrote that article on uh, Hot Wheels Collectors dot com where he talked about what makes uh, Hot Wheels valuable. Oh, that was him. And he include I think it was him. Oh, I could be I could be ex- wrong. And he included like the hollow back picture, right? With yeah, I, it could be yeah, him. I, I don't. I thought it was him. I don't remember, so I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was him. That was a good. Article. Yeah, they they actually acknowledged accelerators for yeah. once and. It was a good article. It was inter- that was interesting to see. It was like, there's no denying the fact that they go for so much freaking money now. <laughs> yeah. Because it's so it's, high in demand. Uh, it's crazy. It, it, it reminded me of um, that, that one comment you put, though. That was hilarious. Uh, what, what under the comment? Dior 2 one for, for lamely saying, I don't like the Dior 2, but I like seeing oh, all yeah. these castings together. And it shows like it's like it's not obvious hate. It's obviously like that's not his yeah. preference. Well, it's just fantasy, like it's lamely like, feeling like he has to has to have an opinion on every little thing. You know, it's like yeah. It's like, I think I think like you you, really, you didn't you didn't have, have to, have to say anything. This post isn't for you. Like you didn't have to say yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's I don't news. like you know, this. He's got to He's got to stay yeah. relevant in some. It was way. frustrating really because like <laughs> yeah, it was frustrating for me because because of like how often the fantasy hate is mm-hmm. you know what i mean and it, it's and like it felt i, like I it hear was people ginning that up in a way it's like oh, yeah, yeah it's like really it's like this, this post isn't for you what are you doing here like yeah. <laughs> you're like, i don't like article. this casting I, but yeah I, I i replied uh no one asked you <laughs> <laughs> ratio then, yeah the, the the replies that came after that was just a crap show i, I yeah. just kind of i just tuned that part out mm. it's like we don't have to there's there's some hate that just we don't need to get into, but it's like, <laughs> just don't, just don't say anything. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I do love, I love Orange Track because I was so surprised when he reached out to me that one time. That was, yeah, that, that was, was so, so cool. Fun. That's why I keep saying like you're the face of the fandom because it's like only you could have done <laughs> something like that. And it and it didn't feel like that either. I I think I had just uh, I don't what did I do? Because I, I, I make I make content. I think I, I just make content. Commented. Yeah. I make content, but I'm not as consistent as you are. I mean, I'll mm. upload a video like once Me every consistent? six months. I'm like every once a month. Maybe. But you're you're actually <laughs> uploading. I'm I oh. <laughs> we're, we've been really bad with uploads at Tesla's mm-hmm. Cube lately. I think it just goes to like there's not a whole lot of faces to put to things. A lot of people do videos without their face, 
um i think one of the reasons i did was just because i had to do the vert wheeler thing because i had yeah. to cosplay and i was like oh well i guess i can't hide my face i have to get used to it and uh, it works. that's how i started and i was really awkward at first but then i had people like nolo coming or nolo af people that know him came up to me and said oh yeah you dude you're you're like super good on camera i'm like no i'm not no i'm not i don't think i don't think you know ah, who i you, am <laughs> you got charisma you're it's, you know it's it's sort of like a forced charisma in a way it's just if i, I had to choose there. if i had to choose like one person to represent the community i'd choose you, you know? well i appreciate it yeah I do. <laughs> jc it's i choose nice. you <laughs> just hops in the pokeball Get in there! <laughs> <laughs> Start stuffing you in a Pokeball. Get in that Pokeball. <laughs> and the only but thing you say... A, you... At the next Legends Tour stop, sees a designer. JC, go! <laughs> <laughs> you don't speak. You just go, JC! JC! Like, you know, Pokemon <laughs> just stay their own name. <laughs> JC! Oh my gosh. That's funny. <laughs> uh, it, just, it just does seem crazy to me, though, that that as, as not the biggest one, but just as a face, I guess, because it's... Uh, like I said, with with Orange Track Diecast, I didn't expect him to reach out to me uh, after I'd made my up to speed on Dior too, and that we had like literally the same exact article. Technically, uh, if you read his article, I was like, "Yo, this article is like super similar to something I did." And he's yeah. like, "Wait, this is amazing! <laughs> this little donut media parody you did." You know, what's uh, funny about the Dior too is um, for those listening, I don't know the original Dior. Um, it was built on the chassis of a, a was it a Dodge A one hundred or something? Dodge A one hundred, yep. I and then the <laughs> the the front end is the rear end of a Ford station wagon. Yes, yes. And so on the Dior two, what Nathan Proach did was he made the front end of the Dior two the rear end of a Ford Taurus wagon. Exactly. And yes. once you see that, once you see that, you can't unsee it. Yep, and I can't tell yep. you how many times I've been behind a Ford Taurus wagon on the road. <laughs> and I go Dior too, and, and I'm just like, it's the Dior too. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. I, I think can never get it out of my head. Especially if you've seen the concept of it, it's it's literally just the the same exact uh, lights that go in. Yeah, and it's, it's so funny because I can what never it was get that out of be. my head, and I can't like <laughs> tell other people because they're not gonna understand. Like if my brother or my uh, my one work friend is in my car just can't be like this is your two just gonna be yeah like, what, what is yeah. what is that <laughs> I think it's, but it's always interesting to me to see people go up to the car that it, like when it's in legends tour and stuff and you see people and i I've, I I've asked them before it's like do you know anything about this car and they're like no but it's super awesome looking like i've never seen anything like this and uh what i i saw some really older collectors like they had you know the like 67 jackets on or whatever and they they were like oh yeah you know we're just we're big hot wheels fans but we don't know that much i feel like and i was just like that's so crazy like you look like a big yeah. fan and stuff you got all these collector badges and stuff and they don't I'm, know anything about this it's yeah it's I'm, amazing. I'm constantly i'm constantly uh time after time surprised with just how little knowledge some of these like veteran collectors don't exactly, have yeah. like because like i can't tell you how many times i brought up custom auto to older collectors and they have no mm. idea what it is seriously this yeah is like hard it's on the car yeah that's <laughs> you grew I, up yeah. with it <laughs> i've had this conversation at my diecast oh club my like five gosh. times now really? well, i'm like one of, i'm like yeah i'm like we're, well if we talk about fantasy what? i'm like one of my favorite fantasy castings is custom auto and they're like yeah. what's that and I, and I show them the car and they still don't know what it is and i'm like it's the red line it's packaging car. One, it's, it's on there. It's literally that one. It's that the one. red lines. <laughs> it's the that one you thing grew up been with, a, but you didn't that, know existed. <laughs> that thing your generation is obsessed with, the red lines. Like you should know this. It's like you know that. It's door, like not right? knowing what the red. It's like not knowing what the red baron is. Like. <laughs> Red Baron is the one car that still keeps on giving. Like but because one. it's like not licensed and kind of under the radar, people don't yeah. know. It's like it's Otto weird. Cooney. It's the guy who did the art. Otto it's Cooney. So it's his, his name is in the. Uh, yeah, it's it is so. <laughs> man, that just always makes me think. I think I I was talking to some car people uh, at a show one time, and I told them I went to the Hot Wheels show, and they were like, "Wait, that was in town?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's in town. You should totally come by." And uh, one of them was just like, yeah, I, I know the Midas monkey. It's like, that's the one I know. Like they know the Corvette from, from the, yeah, that's Gas the monkey Corvette with the, with the engine, right? Yeah. It's so pretty. 
Yeah. It is pretty in person. It really is. It, I, so I didn't get to see it. It sparkles like crazy good. The paint did they bring pretty. it to the did they bring it to the Legends Tour in they Houston? They brought it to Houston uh oh, last cool. time. They brought it to Houston. Was, were any of the guys from Gas Monkey Garage Dallas. there? Uh I think they were, but I didn't get to see any of them for that one. I think, uh, I think my brother my brother met the one guy. In Dallas. They definitely my probably were there in Dallas. My brother met the one guy at Motorama, the guy with the beard, I forget his name. Mm. But he said he was super cool. Sweet. Yeah, no, I, I bet. I mean, they, I know for sure in September they'll be in Dallas because that's where their their place is. And they were there pretty much every single time it was in Dallas. So, But anyway, these car guys, they said they, <laughs> they only knew the Corvette. That was mm-hmm. like the only Hot Wheels car they knew. Yeah, it, it's <laughs> just, that's about it. You know, they don't know. Yeah, that's what I mean ones. by like. They don't even know the Copo Camaro or like. But I don't blame them. I don't blame cars. them though because Hot Wheels has such a weird foggy identity that like. I mean, they have Twin Mill, but like you ask someone to to name a Hot Wheels car off the top of their head, like a non yeah. Hot Wheels fan, and they're just like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting that Bone Shaker, Twin Mill, Dior Two, are like the main trio of the Legends. Uh, I guess Garage, they're Legends Garage, and yeah. and yet I think most those people three... don't know two of the three. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like those three are probably the most iconic Hot Wheels cars of all time, and people mm-hmm. don't even know what they are. You got like, you got your red line, <laughs> you got your two thousands, and you got your like reimagining of, of yeah. old times. Which you know, it's... which also has that connection to like Accelerators World Race. And yeah, that sort of that yeah, end of the fandom. Yeah, I think that's what makes Twin Mill so great, though. I love Twin it's Mill. A, Twin Mill is like a great... the all arounder. Yeah, it's a great trilogy of iconic cars to have. And, and they're, they're just, also different, which is really they don't nice. push them. They don't really push them enough. Like they don't. Yeah. I don't know if if Hot Wheels doesn't feel the same way that they're not as iconic. But like, but when was I the last know. time you saw? When was the last time you saw DR two on like the artwork for uh, like advertisements and promotional last stuff? Last year, even on the, the packaging. When they did the Legends tour, they did DR two in Twin Mill, like for their for yeah. their banners and stuff. But it does seem. I mean, they ne- they they're now using Twin uh, Mill, the mobile, one, ways. the mobile One wrap on Twin Mill is now like and the then it's big like one. With Forza, like they, they put in like Twin Mill, Rip Rod, and Bone Shaker, yeah. but no Dior 2. No so, Dior so 2. Nah, I actually no do. Dior 2. I think I know why for the Dior 2 is because... <laughs> Same with Rocket League. It, no Dior 2 in Rocket League. Yeah, but let's... Okay, for well, for Rocket League, there's no excuse. But for but like, if you buy a 9-pack or, or like a 20-pack <laughs> at Walmart, you'll see the artwork. There's always like... Like a Drifta and like a yeah. Twin Mill and a Bone Shaker. Never a Dior 2. Nope, never. Never a Dior 2. Sometimes they have Phantasm, which is very strange. Phantasm yeah, they pick random the cars sometimes. To put on a, on a box art. But, again, going back to the Dior 2 for Forza, people have told me this, like, oh, why didn't they do it? Why didn't they do it? And I'm like, well, because it's kind of in disrepair. Uh, they do scans for Forza. And if they did a scan of the uh... Dior 2, they'd have to do a lot of work in order to sort of fix the innards uh the, so the inside is <laughs> it's neglected a lot more than 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 we thought it's, i don't think it's well you also it's have to remember shape. i was well you have to remember it was built in six months and that's a very short yeah. time and the interior was kind of second thought you know it's just like throw something in there at that point mm-hmm. the the carbon fiber or whatever stuff they put in there is very sort of cheap and it's just falling apart the heat is just destroying it totally destroying I wish it. I wish they would yeah and I'm sure this tour is not helping they really should put in the money yeah. to like repair it and well I did it. like I said I, I suggested the to Brian because I was pretty like, hey, sure Chip that Foost has his show over Holland if you just over Holland fix the Dior too <laughs> and he just and he there just looked go. at me and he didn't he just like that's an interesting thought and I was like yes he's probably yes it he's is probably thinking <laughs> He's probably thinking, I've wanted to do that for years, but like they won't let me. <laughs> like it costs too much money. <laughs> like I'm sure it literally costs so much money to fix that thing. If you the... say the the word Dior two to any executive, they will slap you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny though, that that's how I that imagine video. it goes down. He sent those videos to execs and uh, probably like, oh, so execs know who I am. They probably didn't. Yeah, watch it. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't, that, isn't that wild? Yeah, um, even for Kurt. When... <laughs> <laughs> one of the funny things is is um when when trying to get so i was actually stuck in there it, it i didn't show it in the video um this is some behind the scenes information for people i didn't want to show it off because it wasn't very a glorious moment for the dior too um i was stuck in there for like 
seven minutes because the door wouldn't open properly. The the hatch local news and, and local also, news is like a <laughs> uh, man stuck in the Dior two for twenty four hours. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is uh, apparently apparently my dad and and some of the other my film guy and I think even Brian were all joking. Oh yeah, I mean if he just dies in there, it's fine. It was bury him in it or something. <laughs> I was like, what? That would be the best coffin to be buried in, dude. <laughs> Imagine being buried in the Imagine Dior being too. Buried in the Dior that, that is poetic. <laughs> uh, like your just... your corpse has the the Vert Wheeler, <laughs> <laughs> the Vert Wheeler cosplay on. <laughs> oh my gosh! But it was so that's funny a that's a good way to go so, out. I think it was so hot in there because it was like man, it was like ninety degrees. In well, yeah, it's Hot Wheels, dude. It's 90 degrees in Houston. There's no air conditioning in this thing anymore. It doesn't work. And so I'm in my it's jacket, wheels. cool cosplay, pants. It's not air conditioned wheels. And it's, shut up. <laughs> I'm <laughs> dying. I'm just dying in here. I'm sweating. My face is so red. And uh, I'm just like, I'm trying to hit. There's like two buttons. There's an A and B button to open the, the hatch. What's this button do? Car. And so the B Dad. button, I think, opens the, the, uh, the back hatch for the for the i don't remember the manual control i guess uh the trunk and then the a button is supposed to open and close it the the front and like if you press it you have to hold it down and the dior 2 does this <laughs> it doesn't Yikes. work so so like we're trying to figure this out and he's like keep holding it keep holding the, the guy that that takes care of the car and he's trying to lift this thing up and and like and and at at some point, I think I accidentally released it. And as soon as I released it, it's trying to like crush his fingers. And he's like, "Okay, this isn't working. Calm down." Like I can barely hear him. By the way, the I'm, like, Dior Two was angry. I'm so it like I'm so. Close it didn't to, want to the door. The Dior Two was finally <laughs> reunited with Vert. It didn't want. It didn't want to let go. It didn't go. want to make me leave. And so I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna calm down gonna try and open this thing up and so he's like okay let's get two people to hold this up and then you just hand me the keys under this thing and i was like okay i will hand you the keys because it has the fob on it so that he can actually use the door so like i i'm holding it down he's like yeah you're holding i'm like i'm holding it i'm holding it i'm like showing him and uh yeah it's (laughs) it's literally doing that so as they're holding it up sort of uh he's like okay hand me the key real quick and there's just like this little tiny gap and i'm like here you go. He's like, okay, I got the key. And they have to let go because this thing is just about to crash on him and stuff. Jeez. And, and Whole so, procedure. Like, like I said, this thing needs fixing so <laughs> yeah, bad. That's, that's uh, sad. Now you know why it's not scanned into stuff. It, it's, yeah. It is sad. And that's why I didn't show it off in the video because I want it to be a celebration and stuff. And it was very not, pointing very out not, negative not good to get stuck in but it was yeah. so funny and uh i think everyone was laughing at the end of it but luckily everything was okay and uh i got brian in the car after that and we took pictures in there and stuff and we didn't close it we didn't close it ever again <laughs> <laughs> i was like yeah no, that's we're not like closing this thing it was a bad idea that's like stuff, that's really. like genuinely concerning yeah well i mean it, it probably would have worked better since if he was with the vehicle the whole time like he understands how to use the fob better than just me trying to like you know fiddle with it trying to listen to his directions inside of a car i'm stuck in uh i think it makes more sense for for them they, they're they pretty much good at keeping it as good as they can at this point which is all it yeah is. i mean it's it was trying to keep it nice it was built can. in the early 2000s for a tv show you know yeah it's gonna be and, it's gonna be rushed also, and cheap and it's also like the the electronics is so old in it i mean you could get better lifting mechanics now probably that would really make it look amazing i mean yeah, even the steering column should... and everything like that's all they gotta real. Re- like the steering they gotta is redo real. it like the steering is real so if they if they made it digital they could actually attach the steering wheel properly to the the hatch instead of into the ground of the of the car so they could add more yeah. leg room so it's it is int- like like I said it's just interesting how it can work now um, with with people and, and I, I just I just opened rides. the hatch I don't know how accurate this is of the real one but I just opened the hatch and the steering wheel goes with it yeah no it's not accurate the steering wheel is yeah. the steering column is is so actually in in the, the front the, there fixed yeah to it's the fixed to it because it has to be because it's manual it's, it's not yeah, yeah it's not digital which is why I say it it should be technically according to the diecast and everything and and the show it's supposed to be on the hatch and it probably would be better to have it on the hatch but 
like I said, that hatch needs some yeah. needs some help. They they got to redo it, but probably Mattel doesn't <laughs> want to fork up the money to do yeah, that. Yeah, I think there's sad. also this this one spike. There's a spike before you get in, so you have to watch out for the spike because it's what latches. Gonna be in, it latches. Gonna the, be the impaled door. by the Dior too. <laughs> so he's so the That's guy's metal. like, oh yeah, watch out for the spike. Please do not hurt yourself on the spike. I'm like, you got it. I'm I'm making sure. I'm like watching that thing. It's literally like this tall, like poking up out of the the bottom of there. It's, I want to see like, an alternate scene of World Race where where he's like, "Come, oh, Alec Marky, come on, let's go!" And he and he goes and tries to jump in the Dior too, and it's like it's like not working. <laughs> <laughs> it's like breaking. And, <laughs> and Alex like, "Hey, bro, watch out for the spike!" And he's like, "Fucking, he gets like impaled." <laughs> Dan Dreser, watch, get some spikes, man. <laughs> <laughs> watch out for the spike, man. Oh my gosh, uh, I think we should go off of real life cars now oh my goodness that was a really long part of the conversation <laughs> yeah i'm, I'm uh, ready to, ready to change subjects i guess yeah so i want to go back to to collecting um what is your favorite piece in your accelerators collection uh probably this uh okay. it's hard yeah. it's it's hard to choose a favorite uh and by the way like... he he put he put his diora 2 118 scale for those that are listening Wait, what did you say? He, I was letting the oh yeah yeah yeah. Scale. Some people yes. yeah, some people are listening and not watching. So yeah, yes, probably the one eighteen scale not, to... If you're not watching, go to JC Squared on YouTube right now. Don't you want to see my beautiful face? Yeah, ten ten twenty p or something. <laughs> Don't you want to see my scraggly beard? Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's hard to choose a favorite because I I love so much of it. Uh, but I don't know. I probably. Did one eighty scale Dior two? If I had to pick one, I've mm-hmm. got the baseline. I got the baseline coin bank. I I really like that oh, that's a nice. lot. Yeah. I've got the box set with all thirty five world race cars with Z thirty six. That's I the one I want. So really, bad. I really love that piece. Yeah, it's just so much. I'm just using this opportunity to flex now. <laughs> yeah, I just I just love my multiple spec Don't types worry. and chicanes. You're not even you're not even at the top one percent of the flexors though. Like the flexors, I'm really are the not ones that got not the anymore. It's like the skateboard. I, or I the have the skateboard. Germany, the Germany. Oh, you do have the skateboard. Okay. I do have the skateboard. Yeah, you I got the skateboard. skateboard. Uh, it was, you know, what's funny is I, I have all these like super rare elusive items, uh, but I don't have uh, Spec Titan Chicane on card. I have them loose, <laughs> but I don't have them in the package. I don't need them. I don't need them anymore. Yeah, it's not worth I'm, it at this anymore. Point, at this point, I'll I'll find a customer, a custom yeah, customizer person to make I know yeah, a custom person because. I mean, it's cheaper and it's better quality too. Like at that point, yeah. you don't even need you don't even need the actual one that came out. Yeah. <laughs> if you're oh, looking for goodness. a spec tighter chicane to complete your set, for those listening, just get a custom. Go go hit up uh, <laughs> go hit up Randy Leahy on Instagram and just right a right custom. yeah. Randy is really that good. is Metro Maniacs Acceleracers Customs. A lot a of those better guys. way to spend your money and you're supporting a creator. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think of some of the Accelerators retools. Like, what do you think of fantasy retools? And- uh, I oh, hate most of them. Uh, it's it's more frustrating with fantasy when it comes to retools because they think no one will notice. Yeah, but yeah. we notice. Yeah, we, uh, we always notice. Like hollow back. I I hate the hollow back retool. Uh, yeah, the way so they good. made they made the engine a part of the body. So anytime they color the body, it just colors the engine too, and it looks so cheap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I. This is a, it's a problem with Mattel just cheaping up, cheapening up, and and it's not just with Hot Wheels. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't, I go, wouldn't say it's just a problem. I think that's just sometimes how it goes. The dollars, yeah, not I as mean, valuable it's, it, was. it is definitely a a symptom of a of a bigger problem. Uh, but we're not gonna get into politics. No, uh, no, 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 not that far. But, it's just literally uh, yeah. dollar. We're not gonna talk value. We're not going to talk economics on the JC podcast, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> um, I mean, I mean, if you want to know about Mattel cheapening up toys, go talk. Go talk to a Thomas Tank Engine fan. Oh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, it, it's it's super annoying how the cars that they do choose to retool to save money is those iconic fantasy cars because they think no one will notice mm-hmm. because they they think those cars don't have fans when they do. Mm. I mean, they retooled the crap out of the, the, the Dior, too. That poor thing. The poor thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I understand is, the, I understand uh, the surfboards, 
because yeah. you know of being a separate piece and everything. But some of the weird changes they made to that casting, I don't understand. Like the big the lip. windshield is just I, I don't understand yeah, the, what's the problem. The, with the, the windows windshield. like aren't flush anymore. Uh, and I know and then, I think the the main issue is is like you can see or you can put your thumbnail like yeah right if, under there but i guess you don't have, want that i guess they have to have it su- totally secure in it now. i have no idea i don't know if it's like if it's easier to produce that way easier mm-hmm. to put to put the car together in the factory i don't know but it is very frustrating and seeing those like the spoilers on synchro and power rage being molded to the body and ruining mm-hmm. the entire profile of the car it's just it is it's lazy and it's sad to see them do that mm. to their own stuff like that. It's... Yeah, I can see that. I, I'd hope, I'd really hope they do like a premium version of Dior 2 or something at some point. Yeah, if they ever that do way premium they can releases. Put it, everything back together properly. And the, the good news thing. is, the good news is, is that uh, Unleashed, because the cars in Unleashed are, the models are based directly on the uh, uh, casting assets that mattel actually sends to milestone Mm -hmm. uh so the good news is is the acceleracers they still have the original files for those original castings but yeah then when with that context when when you add add that context it's like does that mean they don't have the original diora 2 tooling anymore is it Mm. gone what I think is they just didn't digitize it. I think they did it for fan. Yeah, games, that's for that's what I mean. And stuff and they just they didn't bother digitizing it yet. Probably not, because even the NFT version is the same as the unleashed uh, model. Mm. Which it's very strange. Yeah. Yeah, I think strange. I think maybe they just didn't digitize it, but it's still it's still sad to see. But it, it, I was so excited because. Uh, you know, when when the Dior Two DLC came out, it was just set the set the bar so low because that was such a disappointing yeah release. I mean, the car was underpowered; it didn't look right. It wasn't the it wasn't yeah, accurate. Uh, yeah, it's funny. The and then are literally, the, I love this car. I hate the stats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But and then and then the leaks came out of the the synchro model and the baseline model, and they were like one hundred percent accurate. And I was oh, like, yeah. oh yeah, thank God. Oh, something's <laughs> okay in the world. Yeah, yeah I think one they, of the biggest gripes. I they think, actually had the push synchro. They had Ugh. the push through logo. Oh yeah, that too. I in the love game that. because they I didn't do it on thing. the they didn't do it on the RDO two in the base game. Did they? Not? And then they had oh. no the push through logo is not on the on the RDO two. That. It's inaccurate. Okay. And then that once it was actually, they used, the, um, they used it for the the video game, the the real one, the arcade game. They used arcade yeah, I have I have game. no idea, but but seeing the DLC cars with the push through logo is just very pretty. Push through logo is probably was, one of my favorite things. Yeah, it was very relieving. <laughs> yeah, that is, man, that is very nice looking. Goodness gracious, retools, poor things sometimes, poor things. Um. I guess, yeah, I guess we're going on to the end here. And I just wanted to ask, are there any future plans you have going on? I'm guessing no more song covers, right? <laughs> uh, well, there was a time where I would have said no, but there may be something coming soon. Uh, oh, Cosmic Realm? Sorry, I love the Cosmic Realm, like opening. <laughs> I started the Cosmic Realm. I started the Cosmic Realm, never finished it, but uh, no, I'm I'm currently uh, working on uh, I'm working on the Fog Realm with Vulcan right now. So uh, I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to spoil gotcha. anything. Yeah, but um, let's not spoil that. That will be good. Yeah, I always got something on the horizon. I got a lot on my plate right now. I do more mm-hmm. than Hot Wheels. Uh, I've got ADHD, so I got a new hobby every ten minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like um, <laughs> I I I'd, I'd love to make a new video soon for Tesla's Cube. Me and Jomo really want to get together and mm-hmm. do another review. Yeah. Uh, I want to do the vertical stunt set. That would be good. Uh, you know, I want to cover the you know, other track sets and hyperpods and all that sort of stuff. But mm-hmm. Yep, I'm I'm always got something coming. That's good. Uh, where do you see the community is heading? By the way, where do you see the community heading after? I don't know. And stuff. Uh, it's going in a very interesting direction. Um. I think with the collecting aspect of it, uh, it's not going to end well. Uh, mm. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I don't know how to answer mm. that question, really. 
Yeah. It's, I it's, think most people find that one very difficult because it's so everywhere. The the in a way. the the reassuring positive part of it is that it continues to just get larger and larger. Mm-hmm. And I think I think as it goes on, it's just going to get bigger and bigger, and yeah. hopefully at some point Mattel will start to notice. Yeah, and I think that's um, that goes into a good. Uh, it's the only good thing. Or... That, the only good thing that really comes out of the the you know absurdly high eBay prices is that it is a very it's very clear evidence that there's demand for this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that goes into the whole of um, just what what you think when what do you think of like Brian Benedict and stuff saying, "Oh yeah, we want accelerators back," and then what do you think of the petition that that you started? and stuff where you think that's gonna go you think that's gonna uh, go? yeah Hopefully. and for context um the others me and the others at tesla's cube started this petition um to bring back acceleracers and i gotta clarify because i know petitions have kind of been a uh a, the butt of the joke for a long mm-hmm. time in the acceleracers yeah. fandom because there's been a lot of petitions made by fans just on whim and that well, so far this really is work, actually the largest one as, this as one this one's different there, there's a lot I can't say, but but uh, there we have leverage now, and 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 we know that there are people in Mattel who support us and and want to see this happen. But there's a hierarchy yeah. in a company like this, and yeah. in order to make a project like this happen, you, you have to you have to get the green light from those who are investing, uh, you know, executives, marketing executives, mm-hmm. and and you have to get that, uh, you know, that green light, and and. Yeah. and uh, and and when we talk about bringing back accelerators, we're not just talking about like the show. We're talking about anything that has to do with this yeah. property. Just had like the to, name just, of it. Just, even if they just release some cars, you know, Brian and the others, they want to do something with this mm-hmm. franchise. And and I think yeah. it's long overdue. Yeah, I think so, even their marketer on San Diego Comic Con's panel it was even like, "Yes, we hear you. We understand this yes. is a big thing." And it is very reassuring and very surprising to me that especially recently <laughs> that that Brian and, and some in the company feel that way and, and and have wanted this back for a long time and we just had mm-hmm. no idea uh, because it seemed for the longest time it seems like Mattel really wanted nothing to do with us. It was just like and I think really accelerates. I think yeah, I think really really what it comes down to is just uh is just um a lack of communication and so. We have this petition up. It's not just about the story because there's been a lot of pushback about like, I don't really want another Acceleracers movie mm-hmm. to happen because I don't think they would get the story right. Even if you think this is a bad idea, and it, it, it doesn't really matter to me. I just want something done. Uh, if they do a sequel and it's good, then everyone wins. Yeah. If they do a sequel and it's bad, then like maybe everyone will stop asking. <laughs> maybe true. maybe everyone will maybe yeah. everyone will be like maybe this was a mistake but yeah. we don't know we don't know and i think this opportunity is here and i think we should take it so mm-hmm. even if you are doubtful i would say sign this petition there's a link in the description yep um there will be it's you on don't have I to petitions for, it's on for those I that petitions. are listening on audio it's i petitions bring back hot wheels accelerators you can actually just google it as well uh, it's pretty much the first thing that pops up now and, and with Brian and everything and the cars coming into Unleashed and, and uh, the whole infinite, infinite loop thing, I think mm-hmm. we're starting to get some leverage here. Um, of course, with the prices so high, we have evidence that there's demand for this. We're, yeah. we're, we're with progressing. With communities as well. With, with At, all we're progressing. Yeah, we're progressing as a fandom. And, and I think uh, if you want to support that, I, please, uh, what we need is sheer numbers. Yep. So we need as many signatures. We need names, and mm-hmm. you don't have to make an account. Um, if you name use email, a fake, right? if yeah, if you use a fake email, it'll still take it. So if you're worried about spam, it doesn't matter. You can just put a fake email if you need to. Yeah, yeah. We just we just need as many signatures as possible. Mm-hmm. That's good to hear. Yeah, I know. I think I explained it in one of my Hot Wheels news videos. It's just this this will show that it's not just views on the random. It's it's something that people really uh, can put. Yeah, it's something that's a big been, number two, and it's something show that's it been plainly. Uh, it's something that's been very difficult to get across to people because of the fact that petitions were a butt of a joke for the longest time. Yeah, 
It's yeah, like they, this this one's true. different this time, guys. Yeah, it's, it's like sign well, this it, one, please. This one is. It, I know people will just say, "Well, just look at JC Squared's channel." I'm like, "Yeah, you can, but you also have to notice that uh, you could just see, oh, I have 1.78, right? Yeah, like, you, you got to understand that. And then, it, what does that mean, though, in terms of my viewership? Uh, it's different. You know, it's it you got to understand 200, that, like, 100. the people that need to see this, they're not hanging around on the internet. Yeah, they're, they're, they're literally sort of just, they're in and out. They're, they're yeah, hanging they're, on LinkedIn, just tweeting about, like, their these new people Mexico are, thing. These people are people in suits in, in offices. They're, they're, yeah. It's a different world. It's a different world mm-hmm. than what where where we're at. So yeah, they, we need that that. Um, I mean, that's why it, you see it, it, Hot because I know Twitter it's like tweeting at Taco Bell and stuff about I totally get of just saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I I totally get like the reaction of like, why do you even need a petition? All you gotta do is just go on the internet and you can see people asking for it. It's like, well, they don't do it's that. Just, it, yeah, it's yeah. a different world. Like, yeah. it has to be communicated in a different way. They don't travel the, those channels at all. I mean, even on it's, LinkedIn, it's hard to explain. It, it, I, I would say to to people that don't know, go to LinkedIn, go to Mattel CEO and Vice President and COOs and stuff, and all you see is just just posts that you probably wouldn't even care about, like nothing to do with fandom or anything it's just oh, and yeah, i don't want to like this factory or we've opened up this good stuff or this is what our company is doing in this time or something is it's never to i don't want to be fans i don't want to be like disparaging towards like executives or whatever i don't i don't want to say like you know they're out of touch and they don't care about us i'm just saying yeah. that like they're from they're they're from a different world yeah than they, we are. they want stuff fast to them they're they're doing so much already they just want something they can say oh this has how many people and then that's it you know that that, that kind of goes on to that i guess but anyway if you want to see anything done with the acceleracers property whether it's car releases which i think car releases need to happen all you gotta yes. do is look on ebay to see that <laughs> i need some premium uh, <laughs> pronto yeah uh whether it's the cars or the show or hell even maybe a video a video game who knows nice. yeah uh, we would just love to see something happen with this franchise and i think it's yeah. long overdue so if if you like acceleracers or you know someone who does get anyone and everyone to sign it please it would help mm-hmm. us out a bunch yeah, and that is I petitions bring back Hot Wheels acceleracers. Uh, where can people find you as well for for your YouTube? It's Accelerace. What where else can they find you? Yep, uh, Tesla's Cube Accelerace. Uh, I'm Accelerace on Instagram. I'm Accelerace on Twitter. Uh, if you're hanging around the Discord servers and you see a username that says Accelerace, it's probably me. Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, Hot Wheels Discord Accelerace. <laughs> Uh, for those that don't know about the Hot Wheels Discord, it is now an official, not official, but it's a, a community big enough for Discord to recognize that you can search it Hot Wheels um, Discord uh, communities. So if you, I actually if was not aware for, of that. That's pretty yes, cool. if you're just looking for the Hot Wheels Discord, it is now big enough to where you can just search for it in the Discord communities. It has definitely grown a lot in the past like, four years. I mean, yeah. first time I was in, there was like 300 people. Now there's yeah. 10,000 crazy yeah so thank you so much for coming on man i i love this two hour conversation because (laughs) i just love i love talking to you and stuff with Uh, you know me and stuff you know me i mean we could do this for five hours if we need (laughs) to (laughs) all right time for our thomas the tank engine podcast starting (laughs) now (laughs) all right i'm gonna i'm gonna rant about mattel's thomas tank engine toys i'm just kidding (laughs) Oh man, yeah, it's been great to fo- uh, just have you on, and uh, you can find me yeah, it's at a pleasure, JC man. squared, or JC dot squared on Instagram at jcc underscore two 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 four on Twitter, JC squared on YouTube, J A Y C E E squared on tw- I mean on YouTube, and they're literally um, they're literally watching your YouTube channel right now though, aren't they? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, hi, they could be listening. It's Alex X. What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Y'all <laughs> they could be they could be listening. <laughs> They could be listening on Spotify two, or something. You know. Two-hour conversation. They're just like typing at their desk. Wait a minute. What the heck did he say? <laughs> All right, guys. Just check out my YouTube channel that you're watching right now. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> check out this YouTube channel if you're if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Make sure to give it a five-star review. 
Uh, if you want Excel Acer's merch, of course, you go to jclegoman10302.redbubble.com. For those that want to join the channel, uh, you can support me directly. And to those that have joined, AL Seg and Ratchet RPG01, thank you so much. Uh, for those that want to join more, make sure that <laughs> make sure that you are hitting that join button. It is $4.99 a month, and you get your name at the end of videos and including awesome emotes, custom e JC emojis you can use in chat or in comments. So really appreciate Support my boy. Yes, really appreciate y'all a ton. So thank you guys. And with that, I think we can close this thing out. Peace. Take care, guys. This has been the Squared Corner Podcast. Music composed by Steve Rocket. Video and audio recording by Riverside.fm. Video and audio editing by JC Squared. Logo art by Miguel Martinez. And lastly, supported by you, the viewer. Thank you.